Tonight, it's prime time from Mile High. A special Sunday edition of college football. Wide open touchdown. The Rocky Mountain Showdown. The Rumble in the West. Colorado State takes on its arch rival, Colorado. Woo! That's a shot. Throw out the predictions. Since the 1800s, this back and forth battle for state bragging rights has kept coaches, fans, and players on the edge of their seats. Inside the third, down to the 20. The Buffaloes will premiere a no huddle offense. The Rams will showcase a defense of speed and strength. Pride and the Centennial Trophy are on the line. Colorado State battles Colorado. Exciting college football action is now. Just three days ago, the Democratic National Convention brought an emotionally charged atmosphere to this stadium. Now, head coaches Dan Hawkins and Steve Fairchild hope that passion carries over to their two teams in this 80th edition of a classic rivalry. From Invesco Field at Mile High in Denver, a special Sunday night edition of Big 12 College Football Saturday. It is the Rocky Mountain Showdown as Colorado takes on the Rams of Colorado State. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome to a new season of College Football Saturday with a special Sunday night edition. Seems, Dave, just a couple of years ago, we were talking about Colorado starting over. New staff, new quarterback. Well, it's all changed, and so have the expectations. Now that Colorado went to a bowl game last year, and it's especially changed for the quarterback, Cody Hawkins. And, Joel, I think the biggest thing that Cody Hawkins brings to the table is football IQ, quick-minded decision-making. He knows everything there is to know about his offense and then some. And that assertiveness breeds confidence in his entire offensive unit. And the numbers he put up justify that. He set the freshman passing records. He rewrote the record book. And he's going to try to do more this year. And he's got another weapon to work with. He's got the top high school running back uh, prospect in the nation. And this kid, I'll tell you what, you talk about a guy that's got a complete skill set, size, speed, strength, balance. And he put up 7,615 yards and 99 touchdowns in high school to Daryl Scott. And his senior year, those numbers were a little distorted because of injury problems. We're going to see a lot of him tonight. He is the real deal. Well, while Colorado has experience at the quarterback position, you could not say the same for Colorado State, even though they do have a senior starting at that position. Billy Ferris, Joel, and Billy Ferris tonight, what he has to do is not make mistakes, manage the football game, get the team out of bad plays into good plays, and involve all of his playmakers in so doing. Johnson and Bell are big downhill power runners. They combined for 1,600 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. And his tight end, Corey Sperry, is a size speed ratio nightmare. He's too fast for linebackers. He's too big for safeties. Last year in this game, he had eight catches, 103 yards, three touchdowns. Big target tonight. Well, last year it was a classic. We all watched it right here at Invesco. It went down to the wire into overtime as Colorado won. Hopefully more of the same and even though Colorado has taken 15 of the last 20 from Colorado State the Buffaloes know they're going to get their best shot from the Rams No matter how good CU is no matter how good CSU is for the whole season We always get CSU's best shot. I mean they come out swinging haymakers and they're trying to knock us out in the first round And I mean it's always a great football game College football Saturday continues from Mile High Stadium in Denver. Welcome back once again. Anytime Colorado State and Colorado get together, you know it is going to be a close game, and that's exactly what we saw on the same field last year. Colorado State leading by three at the half, and then Caleb Haney finding Corey Sperry. Touchdown made it 21-17. Running back Kyle Bell adding to the advantage, 28-17 after the touchdown run. But Sumler got one back for Colorado, a three-yard run, Two-point conversion, 28-25. Everhard, 22-yarder, he ties it up. 13 seconds left in regulation when he did that. And then Everhard once again in overtime. Can he claim the victory for Colorado? From 35 yards away, he did it. And Colorado beating Colorado State. First time they've ever gone to overtime in the Centennial Cup battle. And as close as they have been, 
there's an emphasis on the kicking game. And we've got a couple of guys that have never kicked for their respective schools. A true freshman, Ben DeLine. His father did kick for the Rams, though. Eric Goodman under his belt a season at Wyoming, fortunately, for the Buffaloes. Stay with us as we come back. We'll be ready for the opening kickoff. In Denver, it's the 80th edition. Colorado State and Colorado. Big 12 College Football Saturday is coming up next. This special edition of College Football Saturday all brought to you by FreeCreditReport.com. Do you know your credit score? You can find out right now instantly and online at FreeCreditReport.com. And also by Best Buy. You have here. We get ready for the opening kickoff. Colorado, Colorado State, but first, the two teams just moments ago coming out for the first time. Near capacity crowd at Invesco at Mile High and threatening weather as you can see in the background. The wind is kicked up. That could be a decisive factor as we head downstairs check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Coach, a huge rivalry game. Seven out of the last eight years. It's been decided by a touchdown or less. What's your gut feeling? What's going to come to tonight? Well, who knows? You know, that's far enough and it's fun to get in here and just throw yourself in it. And uh, that, that's why you do it. So it's been a great ride. It'll be a great game. We'll see. Keep the fans here till the end. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Now, Jamison Davis, a true freshman from Eagle, Idaho, is going to kick it away. We talked about the importance of the kicking game because they have been so close. Now, he is going to handle the kickoffs. But as I mentioned earlier, Eric Goodman, a sophomore who was a starter at Wyoming. And how much is the win going to be a factor? Well, at first, they thought they were going to have to hold the football. Back deep. You're looking at John Mosier, reserve running back out of Miami, Florida. He's over to the far side. Mike Myers over to the near side, the senior from Riverside, California, and we are underway. Good kick. Wow. It'll stay in the end zone. And it'll be first and ten for the Rams. But Billy Ferris has not started a game since he was a senior in high school, Woodlawn High, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Just about an eight-minute drive from LSU Stadium. That was November of 2003. So there are a few jitters at the outset of this game for this young man. You can understand why. And he's got good size. And he's a good-looking athlete at 6'2", 6'3", yeah. 225. Yeah, you can see in the pocket, Joe. And his, his, his big thing right now is don't put your team in jeopardy. Deion Morton, the motion man, the splits of the two backs and with the counter action. It's going to be Kyle Powell. Good yardage across the 20. It closed in a hurry, though. Look at about three, three and a half yards. And complimenting him offensively. Up front, the left guard is the experience for Colorado State. Gadowski is a freshman, but we'll see Shelly Smith, the junior from Phoenix. They'll alternate. Not a lot of starts among the fives, of them, but Smith did start all 12 last year. Sperry's the guy at tight end to watch. Yeah, they got three on first down. First throw is a beauty. It's complete. Rayshon Greer, the junior from Las Vegas. Well, that'll get your feet settled in and quick pocket protection, David. No, no doubt about it, Joe, and a nice route. The two defensive tackles for Colorado are the are the standouts. I mean, they're going to plug it up in the middle. Hippolyte and Nicholas, they'll take control of things. Jeff Smart, he moves from the Mike backer to the Will. And Ryan Walters, captain at the free safety position, he's the quarterback of the defense. His defense was susceptible to the pass last year. They were one of the best in the nation against the run, giving up only 128 yards a game. First down from the 39 of the big game to Greer. Behind Deion Morton. Linebacker was there, and he's ready to pop in Jeff Smart. If it's thrown ahead, Smart's got a pick. Well, what, what has to happen, Joel, is Colorado's loading the box up, and you can understand why. They're expecting Colorado State with the two big running backs, Johnson and Bell, to hammer the football between the tackles. So when they load the box up, Colorado State's wide receivers have to win the one-on-one -on -one battles on the edge. They have to win in order for Colorado State to be able to throw the football. A lot of traffic inside there as we're looking at between tackles. A lot of bodies in there. Johnson, the tailback, split with Paunga. Like a wingback spot. They're going to run behind that side. And nothing doing. Knocking in again. Jeff Smart busted up the entire play. 
There's early penetration for the linebacker. They played him in the middle a little bit. He's weak today. You talk about similarly starting a middle linebacker. They're getting some athletes on the field. They are, and smart. Basically, he's taking the spot that Jordan Dizon dominated the league at last year. Jordan Dizon, defensive player of the year in the Big 12. Smart is appropriately named. He makes reads and comes downhill quickly, just like that. Very, very intelligent linebacker plays the angles well. Ferris needs a dozen for a first down out of the gun. Opening drive of the game. Good pocket protection. Middle of the field. And thrown up the back of the defensive back. Ryan Walters, the free safety. He didn't know what hit him. Yeah, he got his hand out there. Made a little little bit of a, a play on it with, uh, with that one hand. But this is what I'm talking about. The receivers on the edge, they have to win their battles. And, and Walter got his, got his hand in there, left hand a little bit, and, and defended it and just, just knocked it out of the possession of, uh, of Wallace. Josh Smith, the wide receiver, and the big play specialist for Colorado, waiting for the punt from Anthony Hartz. And best case scenario, Jason Smith was going to be punting and kicking for Colorado State, but a broken arm, and he's out. The wobbler, Smith will take it back at the 18. Making a miss, oh, but ball the ball's ball. in the air, look out. Colorado alertly covering the ball. And coming up with the back inside, his own 10, Gardner McKay, a break for the Buffaloes. You know, talk, talk about the kicking game being a factor in this football game. Ball security is a must. And the ball security was not handled well enough by Josh Smith. Ball's knocked right out of there. I'll tell you, that's a really heads-up play that saving disaster right there. McKay recovering that football. And Colorado maintains possession, but their field position to start this game is horrendous because of an early mistake in the kicking game. Well, Dimitri Sutler is going to start in the backfield with Tony Hawkins. We will see Darryl Scott, though. We'll also see another true freshman rookie running back. Rodney Stewart going to be something. Banging his way for a yard the most. Swarming defensively coming up Michael Sisson the strong side backer on the outside Cody Hawkins last year threw for a little bit better than 3,000 yards That was third best among freshman quarterbacks one guy ahead of him only a hundred yards ahead of him quite an athlete Sam Bradford of Oklahoma he topped all the first year guys Now Hawkins out of the gun on seven and close to ten ton of time up the grounds and off the fingertips of the defensive back. That was up on air. He had a better shot at than Josh Smith. Colorado State tried to substitute personnel in late. And there was a long run to get that personnel group in. And really, it's hard to throw a, a football over a defensive back's head when he's given that much cushion. I mean, whoop, he was he was given all kinds of cushion. He can't, and he had a, he had a better opportunity to make a, a play on the football than up there than the receiver. David, the wind is really whipping right now into the face of Cody Hawkins and Colorado. He's sent it a good distance when you consider the way the wind is gusted up. Yeah, if you look at the top of the goalpost, you can see you see how those flags are blowing at the top of the goalpost. I mean, it is definitely in his face. So now critical third down early, field position-wise, with a slip screen. That's Scotty McKnight, and he won't go anywhere. Job by Pagnotta owns over there too. And the Colorado State Ram defensive unit, a much maligned group last year when they gave up on average better than 400 yards a game. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State, thrilled to death with the first series that his group gave him out there as effort wise. The enthusiasm, the intensity is pretty dramatic. Colorado's going to have to match it. And now a timeout it has been called by Colorado State before the punt. By Delano. We'll come right back. Emotionally charged in Vesco Field at Mile High. And the bow early, it belongs to the Rams. Colorado State. The Rocky Mountain Showdown continues. College football Saturday, and we are in Denver. Well, we haven't even played three and a half minutes, and it seems like we already got a quarter and a half out of the books. It is that emotional right now. And in Vesco in Denver. Colorado State ready to get it back as they shut him down. Josh Smith gave it away on a punt return. It was recovered by Gardner McKay, but it set him up inside their own five. So now, tough job. Delano punting into a stiff breeze to Deion Morton. 
are scoreless with 11.42 to play in the first 15. Good protection, but a little wobbler. Orton will stay away. Conrad will roll, but still plus territory for the Rams when they get it for the second time offensively when we come back. So Ferris has a series under his belt. The quarterback for the Rams also picked up the first down. Stay with us. We're scoreless so far in Denver. Colorado State the short field as they get into the Buffaloes 47. Well, since 1993, Sonny Lubeck has been the program at Colorado State. He turned everything around at Fort Collins, but now Steve Fairchild takes over, a guy that knows about the environment, the culture, and talked about coming back to his alma mater. Well, I'd always been looking for the opportunity to be a head coach and wasn't quite sure when and if an opportunity would come about, but... Uh, this one was special because I went to school here and you know met my wife and, and been here as an assistant coach, so uh, it sure seemed like the right fit. He had been the coordinator for Sonny Lubeck, had been a, an assistant there for eight seasons under Lubeck before he went to the NFL in 2000. He stack it up on the wide side of the field for Kyle Bell. Between his guard and tackle, though, he did not bounce it outside. He still gets a little more than two, almost three, on the first down carry inside the 45. Bell last year rushed 40 times for 135 yards and a touchdown. He shrunk the game. He controlled the clock. They were able to establish their ball control mentality, which is what they want to do tonight. Again, against Colorado, will Hippolyte Nicholas and company be able to stop that power inside running game? And that's the key, what you just talked about, the game of keep away. Keeping Cody Hawkins in the offense off the field by maintaining ball possession with long drives if you're Colorado State. Ferris on second and seven. Little dump off underneath to his fullback. And good yardage for the first down. Paunga, the sophomore from the Lakewood, Colorado. He started as a redshirt freshman last year, and he's got it over the chains, Dave. The key to that, Joel, outstanding. I don't mean good, I mean outstanding pass protection. Colorado rushes four, drops seven. They bunch them all up. There's nobody within sniffing distance of Ferris, and he just checks down. They drop seven into coverage, nothing downfield. He says, okay, I'll just, I'll just hit my fullback and, and pick up a first down. The big boys up front, tip of the cap to you. Absolutely took care of Colorado's four-man pass rush with ease. It was a problem for Colorado last year. Yep. They, they, they stopped the run, but they couldn't get to the quarterback. They could not get sacks last year. No, you're right. I mean, that, that was a big issue. They, they only had uh, 19 sacks last year and 47 quarterback pressures. That's not enough. A first down at the Buffaloes, 35 for the Rams. Down is the single. Watch out for number 80 before too long. It's going to be a screen. 80 was the blocker, but it didn't do much on the receiving end. It was John Mosier who went to the slot, the sophomore from Miami, and Smart got him. Watch the recognition. Colorado recognizes they all stay on their feet in, in pursuit of the football. Smurray gets his block, but the inside-out pursuit, separation off of off block at the linebacker level was outstanding. Nobody got cut in half. Nobody got knocked to the ground. The Buffaloes all stayed on their feet and ran to the football. Excellent team defense. Working with the wind at his back, it's going to be second and long. Second and close to eight. Again, Ferris out of the gun with two to each side. A dead ball. False start foul coming up. Yeah, I, I think the center forgot the snap count. Before the snap, false start, 53 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yep. On the right tackle, Pemberton, but I agree with you. Everybody was moving. Yeah, everybody was moving, and the ball the ball wasn't moving. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's going to jump on the outside, but there are other guys at the line of scrimmage that were jumping as well, and the ball still hadn't, still hadn't moved. But he might have been a little early even on the snap count. You know, when you're, when you're blocking a pretty good edge rusher like he's facing, the first thing you want to do is take that first quick step. Set, but you cannot forget the snap count and do it early. So take it back outside of the 38, second and 13. Bell again, can't get a seal, can't get anything over the right side. Shut down completely by Brad Jones, a strong side backer. So the penalty gets you off schedule, and then Colorado follows that penalty up with a tackle for loss. So this is not the situation that you want to put your, your quarterback, your inexperienced quarterback in. You don't want Billy Ferris facing third and 15. What will Colorado do? Will they rush four, drop seven? Will they come with a, a pressure package? This down a distance favors the defensive football team. Now, will they look for number eight? They haven't gone in this direction yet. And that's a world-class tight end, Corey Sperry. 
who had eight grabs last year. It's a screen instead. A good idea to bat. And bat toppled inside the 35 at the 33. Do you gamble the long field goal try on a guy who's not yet kicked for you, a true freshman, even though he has the wind at his back? That's right. Well, the reason that Colorado State came up with a short field is Colorado punted into the wind. And you had a full punt trajectory wise as a result. Colorado State comes up with a short field. It looks like they're just going to go for it here on fourth down. They're not going to go for the long field goal. They're certainly not going to punt it. They're going to go for it here on fourth and eight. If they punt it, it goes in the end zone. They only pick up 13 yards. Bell in the backfield. Out of the gun. Paunga stays there as well with Billy Ferris. Pocket holding up again for Ferris. He's got the time, but will Bell be able to get the marker? No. Colorado takes over as they fail the Rams on fourth and eight. And to me, Joe, that's equivalent to a takeaway. It doesn't go down to the books as a turnover, but it's like a fumble that's been recovered. You lo lose it on four downs, it's like a giveaway. So the Rams wasted a big opportunity early. The short field don't get points, and Colorado's got it back. Getting windy a little darker as College Football Saturday continues from Mile High at Invesco. For more on the condition, let's join Jim Knox. Knoxie. Right, thank you, Joel. The field's in pretty good shape. You, all you see is some discoloration. That's due to the Democratic National Convention, which closed on Thursday. They told me 9,000, 9,000 folks were on the turf, a total of 84,000. It's in tip-top shape, but rain is on the way, guys. All right, Jim. Yeah, the wind has picked up. You can feel it over the air now. A couple of yards for Demetrius Sumler. And we had an opportunity to talk about Cody Hawkins earlier, but he's working behind a huge line, and especially the two sophomore tackles. Sanders is the experience. Third year as a starter, but Solder is 6'9. Right. Ryan Miller is 6'8. They're both that, athletic. That's large. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Smith is their big play threat. Patrick Williams. And don't forget about Scotty McKnight, who led them in receiving last year. He'll come off the bench wearing number 21. Hawkins in trouble. How about the screen to Sumler? He's got a block. He's got a first down, and he's popped across the midfield stripe with a first down at the 43 of Colorado State. What a call. Set up perfectly, and the guy that got the big block, Daniel Sanders, Pancake City, get out the maple syrup number 75 in the dark jersey. Watch the big center down the football field right here. Oh, Pancake, down he goes. Put on the syrup. That's an extra 10 yards because Daniel Sanders Locked him up and drove him to the turf. Nice job, big fella. Any butter on those hotcakes? Yeah, I always like a little butter. You gotta do that. <laughs> you gotta butter it up. You gotta put some syrup on it. I, I, I'm, I'm into the pancake. Daniel Senior Sanders, one of the 50-year senior uh, captains. He's played a little guard. He's seen it all. A lot of football. He knows what this big robbery is about. John Bible, our referee, headed over, straight to something and out. Joel, I got a question for you. Do you think if Jason Smith were kicking today, you think they would have tried a field goal with Jason Smith? No question. I agree. Absolutely. With the that, wind at their at back. The back. I think that was the first time today that the Jason Smith factor, he was the kicker that was all set to go, but he broke his right arm in a mock game trying to recover a, a, a misplay, a snap ball that was on the ground. He dove for it. Other players dove for it. He broke his right arm. Not season ending, but he was going to punt in place kick. And, uh, you know, huge blow. Yeah, huge. There he is right there with his uh, with his arm in a sling. And, and I think if he were in the football game, they would have lined up to put the first points. There was an equipment board. malfunction. The play is not under review. Yeah. Equipment malfunction? That's not Jackson, is it? You're talking about the guys up in this booth? Equipment malfunction. <laughs> that was halftime of the Super Bowl. Now you're talking about Jason Smith, the senior from Centennial, Colorado. Needs 19 this year to become the all-time leader at Colorado State. That's how much he has meant to the program. And they definitely would have gone for it. By the tip, 75% of his career attempts. On first down for the 43. Dead ball foul coming up. Before the snap, ball start, 66 offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Redshirt freshman from Phoenix, Blake Barons. Everybody's uh, a little jumpy. Blake Barons at the uh, at the guard position. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit edgy, a little bit jumpy in there. And he had, there he is, leaning forward before the snap of the football. Real close. He's uh, he's jumping the defensive lineman, trying to get some some distance, separation between his rush guy and the quarterback. And yeah, he just mistimed it just a skosh. So first and 15. 
They'll run McKnight, and they'll give it to McKnight, and it's going to be a double reverse. Here comes the other wide receiver, Josh Smith. And Smith takes it with a couple of hits for eight down to the 40. Now, defensively, for the Rams, Colorado State, got to get better after last season when they gave up better than 400 yards a game. Tommy Hill. Up front, can he get some pressure? The senior had five and a half sacks last year. Ricky Brewer and Herinick, they've been there. They've done that for Colorado State. And in the secondary, Clint Kubiak. Hopefully that young man can stay healthy. Played well in the opener last year. In fact, played the first two games very well. And then out for the rest of the year, like Sperry, after the first two games due to injuries. And his dad, of course, head coach for the Texans. He's uh, part of the football family, no doubt about that. His younger brother, a backup quarterback. It'll be somewhere. Looking for the first down marker. He'll be short. They get to him just shy of the 35. So about two yards needed for the first down coming up on third. So we, uh, we, showed, we showed Sanders what he did on the on the screen, getting out in front. Watch, watch the big fella. The little double team with the center and the off guard. Now you finish, finish, finish. Oh, pancake number two. Get out some more syrup. He's running low on that bottle. <laughs> I'm losing it early with you. <laughs> Too hungry up front, those guys. Yeah. That's David Head, the left guard. Yeah, the interior guys. You know, and they're close enough to the quarterback. It's all, it's usually it's the guys on the edge, the tackles. They're so far away they can't hear the quarterback with peripheral vision. If you can't hear the quarterback, get one of your eyeballs down on the football. Don't you move until the football moves, just like a defensive lineman. I know it negates your only advantage, but if you can't hear, you have to start using your eyes. So there's your ballpark there. Yeah. We're talking about Seattle where the Seahawks play, but this is wild. Now Hawkins in trouble. Summer will be pounded as soon as he caught it. Good play over the middle. And the stick as he hit him early, coming up out of the secondary. And it was heretic, in fact, the linebacker on the weak side. And he's short of the first down by about four. Not the fastest guy in the world, but when he diagnoses, he plays at another speed. Really closes on the football. Cody Hawkins a little bit, a little bit frustrated right now. You know, in three scrimmages, Colorado inter-squad scrimmages, the offense rolled up 19 touchdowns. They were unstoppable against their own defense. So a little more than four to play in the first quarter. And Delato, let's see if he can down it inside the 20. Horton waits on the wobbler. And on Colorado hop as he'll get to it. And deep in Colorado State territory. So the Rams will get it for the third time offensively. Back at their own 13. And this week, College Football Saturday, all presented by Accurate. Suzuki returns. Got a twin bill. It'll all start with 17. Frank BYU taking on the Huskies of the Pac-10 from Washington. Then Louisiana Tech. They will be there looking upset. 13th ranked Kansas. Non-conference showdown in Lawrence. Coverage all start. With the college football kickoff show Saturday. It's coming Saturday. Don't forget at 2.30 Eastern. 11.30 out of the West Coast in high definition. Joel, the uh, Colorado Buffaloes have, have flipped field position. They had the error on the punt return, put themselves back at their own five. They've steadily, with exchange of possessions, regained advantage of the field position. Johnson, big hole up the middle. He's got a first down and breathing room. So much for field position. All right. He did it on his own. The senior from Miami who averaged over the last half of the season 126 yards a game on the ground for the Rams. I want to know how long did it take him to grow that hair? Man, that's <laughs> unbelievable. But he hits it. Off lineman gets the block. It's just a little power play pulling that off guard. He, he fits his block exceptionally well. And off to the races goes the big man Johnson. But you know what, front Joel, Stanley, uh, Shelly Smith. The best athlete up front, he can really run, he can really pull. He did a great job, 74 in the white. That's his driver at left guard that you're talking about. Go top heavy on the right side, the wide side of the field. Johnson with the cutback action. Just keeps him spinning, doesn't he? Boy, what a tough, tough guy to bring down. He's got it for almost four, close to the 35. Your entire order ships for just 295 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. You know, they're getting closer and closer, Joe. I know you've been looking for it, too. Sperry, at some, some point, they're really anchoring Colorado in between the tackles, running that football. At some point, little play-action pass. Right there, Corey Sperry. He's lined up in the slot. He's lined up as an H-back right now. They're going to go to him at some point. He's on the same side as the other tight end. Pikes, he'll give it on a light. A little delay action to Johnson. 
nothing doing. Two yards at the most, up to the 36. So in that kind of in between, run or pass down on third and five. But Corey Sperry, last game and the opener last year, how about eight catches and three of the eight went for scores? That, that's amazing. And, and Fairchild, the head coach, likened him to Tony Gonzalez, who's played on this field for the Kansas City Chiefs when they've come here to play against Denver. He was a Division I basketball recruit, 6'5, 250, tremendous athleticism, change of direction, can run. Keep working on that blocking. That's the uh, little bit of the fly in the open for Colorado State 0 for 2 so far on third down tries. He's third less than five. Little bubble screen and it's short. And it, they're going to call it a catch for Rayshon Greer. Man was on his back before the ball was in there. Yeah, no Brown, flag on Chappelle Brown. Yeah, Brown read it, Joel. And he, he got off the block. It's a, it's a wide receiver screen. Watch Brown separate. Oh, the block never came. John Johnson never got the block, and he couldn't help his receiver out on the wide receiver screen, but a quick read by Brown. He diagnosed that immediately. Josh Smith waits for the punt. Another guy who's not punted for Colorado State. That's Anthony Hartz. He almost fumbles away a high snap of the flag down. Low line drive over the head of Smith. Recovers in time. Good coverage downfield, though. Rams get to him. It was Clint Kubiak. So Kubiak, great play on special teams. The flag is down, though, at the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I wonder if somebody was downfield. They may not have had seven men on the line of scrimmage. You have to have seven men up on the line. They may have only had six. The punt team's the offensive team. Going to get seven on the Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Colorado State will re-kick with a five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Now, do you know about that so well because you were a Victim. You were there. You were the guy. <laughs> you, know, you know what it is? It's like it's like the tackle sometimes, Joel. Guys will line up too far back off the line, trying to get angles on the rush guys. You have to creep up in that line of scrimmage and make sure seven guys are right across the line of scrimmage. A break for Colorado. After Kubiak did a sensational job on special teams, Corral Smith back at the 10. Now, Will. Buffalo's be able to take advantage. Steve What's Fairchild. going to be the difference in territory? Because in your debut, that's the last thing you can be beaten by a special teams play. Yeah, and he didn't like that call at all. He's saying, are you kidding me? You're, you're saying that one of my up men, they just weren't up on the line of scrimmage far enough, and you called that? That's uh, Tiki Tap. Another real low liner. Smith from the 28. And he's got a little bit of a lane, making a mess. So instead of the 10, how about a plus 32 on that play? Yeah. They get it out to the 42. Huge sequence early in this game. And with those low line drives, Joel, they're hard to cover. You have to get hang time and give your coverage team an opportunity to get down the football field. Those low line drives will come back at you very, very quickly. So Colorado from their own 42. And the expectations, as we documented at the top of the telecast, after only two wins for Dan Hawkins in his first year, to go 6-6 six and six regular season and a bowl game at a close loss to Alabama last year, and now a year under that young man's belt, Cody Hawkins. So the pressure, the expectations, totally are different going in. It's similar. We have not seen Darryl Scott yet. Bangs his way for three up to the 45. Tommy Hill wrapped him up. And as soon as I say we have not seen Darryl Scott, it's the debut of one of the top high school recruits in the nation. A lot of people thought he was going to Texas. He committed to Colorado where his uncle, Josh Smith, is a wide receiver. Scott is everything that was advertised. The coach said he came in a little out of shape. He's lost 20 pounds. He's put together right now, I'll tell you. On the play fake, Hawkins, Scotty McKnight, he's got it for a first down. Didn't take long to use Scott as a decoy. Defense went to the near side, Hawkins the other way, and it's down to the 44. Yeah, a little play action. It turns into a naked bootleg. They run a counter and then roll Hawkins away from it. There it is. All the action going to the left. He comes out to the right, his right, the offense's right, and throws the football to McKnight. And McKnight and Hawkins, chemistry immediately. Childhood friends, they get timed up there on the same page right away. Hawkins out of the gun again. Scott as a decoy. And on the reception, the former walk-on who now has a scholarship. Scotty McKnight, the first freshman to ever lead Colorado in receptions as he did last year. You know, Joe, what a nine route, which is just a, a, a straight down the field go route. There's different, there's three different ways a quarterback can throw that. 
over the outside shoulder, the inside shoulder, and, and, and McKnight and, and uh, Cody Hawkins, they knew exactly what each other was going to do without even having to look to communicate. They were that they were on that same page to that extent. Cody Hawkins didn't have that kind of a, a relationship with his other receivers. He had to build on that. He and McKnight had it immediately, though, because they had worked together long before they got to Colorado. Well, that's the end of a scoreless first 15 minutes of play in the debut of Steve Fairchild as the coach at Colorado State taking over for the legendary Sonny Lubin. Momentum right now, though, belonging to the Buffaloes of Colorado. The end of the first 15 minutes of play. We'll come right back to Invesco at Mile High. You're watching a special edition of Big 12 College Football Saturday in Denver. We get ready for the start of the second quarter and welcome back to College Football Center. A special Sunday night edition from the best go at Mile High. Joel Myers, Dave Lapman, Jim Knox, and dead even at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. Colorado driving, though, as we look at the numbers at the end of the first quarter. And not a lot of offense. Field position very important with the wind gusting now. Look at the, look at the time of possession, though. Colorado State playing keep away like they had hoped, limiting Colorado's opportunities. Buffaloes have it at the 31 on the first snap of the second quarter. This drive started back at their 42. Hawkins out of the gun. It's Darrell Scott. First career carry. And taking it up the middle. Good game. Almost to the 25, so just about six for Darrell Scott, who goes at 6 1, 2 20. And he's coming in, David. Yeah, for Colorado. Keys the game, win the line of scrimmage. They feel they've got an edge at center and both the tackles, like we talked about in the open, as well as two defensive tackles. They got to win the line of scrimmage and spy Sperry. You got to pay a lot of attention to him at tight end. Double cover him with linebacker and safe. Little play action. Hawkins way out of the reach of Josh Smith with a flag thrown by John Bob, where you normally see a holding call. Yeah. Holding offense number 73. That's a 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's Ryan Miller, the right tackle. 6'8, 310 pounds. Rush, rush man got underneath him a little bit. Took him to the ground. Here he is at the right tackle position. He's in the two point stance. He's got the kick step set. Takes him inside. Now he gets a little high and he takes him down to the ground. Pulls out, pulls the shirt, pulls the shoulder pads, and then just uh, kind of pins him to the ground. Colorado State, smart quarterback play. Now don't put your team in jeopardy in the kicking game. A true freshman and a junior college uh, transfer hunting and kicking today for Colorado State. Big factors in this game. Yeah, it'll be second and almost 15. Hawkins, middle of the field. Oh, McKnight's oh, available. Oh. Touchdown, Colorado! Six yards to his favorite target from last season. Found the seam. McKnight found it. Continued down the football field. Cody Hawkins. Perfect touch. Hit him in full stride. Eric Goodman, his first kick as a Buffalo. He's got the extra point. Gets that out of the way. And the middle of the field available for Cody Hawkins with McKnight. Good protection. Hawkins puts it on the money. Over the safety in front of the cornerback. Colorado pierces the scoreboard first. Cody Hawkins talking to him upstairs after the perfect pass as he's only missed once so far. Starting the game six for seven. In fact, three of the six completions have gone to that young man. And the score, this guy to McKnight. You know, the comfort level, Joel, you can't beat comfort level. And McKnight and Hawkins have it. They're on the same page. It's like peanut butter and, but and jelly. They're good apart. They're better together. Down win, Davis. As Mike Myers will definitely keep it to the end zone after battling the football. And the Rams will have it first and 10 their own 20. First of all, a few things happen. Watch the offensive line pick up the stunt. Herenic doesn't get a deep enough drop. Perfect pass over the linebacker between the safeties trying to close. A bunch of things happen well. Look at the lineman pick up the twist. Give him protection over the Hrenic in between the safeties. A lot of things happen. Offensive line, quarterback, wide receiver. Everybody performed at a high level. Six points on the board as a result. 
Well, let's see how the Rams respond. Long field. The quarterback has done a decent job managing the game, and that's all they want out of Billy Ferris. Yep. Don't make mistakes. And see, Ferris has said they just want good management. As Ferris goes over the middle, first grab of the game for Sperry. He's got eight, up to the 28. And one last look on the McKnight score. Going to keep those legs loose, McKnight. Looks like you're going to have a big night. Watch the offensive line sort out the twist, pick it all up. Perfect throw. Hawkins knew as soon as he released it, he had a shot with McKnight. He knew it was over Horinick's head. Did I split those safeties? Perfect throw by Cody Hawkins. Eight only two on second down. And the 28 Kyle battles the single, spread it out with three wide receivers. Bell, power back, gets it by the yard. He's got it to the 31. Are you talking about a career best 40 carries for this young man last year. Had a touchdown, 135 yards in the three point loss, a senior from Kingsburg, Colorado. You know, Joe, a lot of times it's thunder and lightning. With Colorado State, it's thunder and thunder. I mean, both of those backs are the same type of running back. Bigger body guys, 225 to 230. Lower those shoulder pads, just finish runs. Yeah, pound it, try to wear him down. It's tough to wear down, though, George Hibbelite and Brandon Nicholas, the underneath tackles. Yep. Uh, Hibbelite, in particular, an All-American candidate on the play fake. Ferris in oh, trouble. Man. First sack of the game for the Buffaloes. Nicholas. Now we were just talking about Nicholas and Hebelite, and he ran into a stone wall, didn't he? The young man out of Modern Day High School, Santa Ana, California. Nicholas uh, started his career at Notre Dame, transferred out of Notre Dame, came to another goal, the dome helmet, and that's Colorado. Watch him stay with it, stay with it, separates from the block, and bow, boom. And what, what all it is is just stay after it, push, push, push the quarterback has to step up. Nicholas comes off the block. Basically, the defensive ends did a good job. The main reason that sack occurred, covered sack. Nowhere for quarterback to throw the football. When he stepped up in the pocket, it was over. Loss of six. Ferris again out of the gun on second and 16. Heat again. It's oh. Morton. And in and out of his hands incomplete. Deion Morton kicked it away. And it looked like it came to his hands and popped out off his knee. And it'll be third and long. Worst case scenario for the Rams and their fans. Looks like, Joel, that uh, Colorado's D-line is starting to take control of things a little bit up front. And uh, I, I tell you, that was a pretty good rush off the off the edge right there. Yeah, we were just talking about the underneath tackles, the consistency, two guys that show up all the time. And, and Joel, they feed off each other. It's a friendly competition. One guy makes a play, the other guy wants to make a play. They want to make sure that this was an incompletion and not a, a catch and fumble. Being looked at, I guess. Every play in college football is looked at. It's a matter of do you want to take the time to continue the review process? And it looks like they're they've communicated with uh, Bible that they want to take a longer look. Well, now you get an idea of what we were talking about. The wind kicked up, the temperature dropped, and you can almost smell rain a few miles away. And here's our position. Jim yeah. Knox, hopefully you're undercover. Oh no, this is good football weather. Lappy, you would love it down here. The big ones would love it. Nice, cool rain coming down the heart of the better for the big guys. You know what, Noxie? It's a grease pig down there now. When the, when the ball gets just a little bit wet is when it's the most dangerous. I think the, the, the more it rains, the louder the crowd gets. Tell you what, all they need is a little soap down there, a little shampoo. Would be a big, <laughs> would be a big group shower down there. Yeah, we've done so now many. Motion, the play is not under review. Well, the play is not under no, review. And okay. it looked like it never got in and was uh, held on to by Deion Morton. Dave, we've done so many of these games, going back a number of years now, and every year it seems like it gets a little bit. Do we get older or does it get louder down there? <laughs> I'll tell you, if the fans get into it, there's no question about it. Uh, I mean, this is what it's all about. This is exactly what it's all about. You're in a, you're in a venue like this, approaching 80,000. The stadium will hold, and uh, they're, they're in full throat tonight. There's no question. So now, third long bell is the single with Ferris in the backfield. With two and a half minutes into the second quarter, as the Buffaloes have the only points of the game so far. Little stunt action up front. A lot of time for oh. Ferris, and almost picked off. Knocked away from Morton. 
Walter. Big play by the safety Ryan Walters, the senior from Aurora, Denver Summer. Joel, if he played the ball, he might have gone pick six. He's playing the receiver, doesn't really find the football, and just makes a, a big hit on the receiver. I thought if Walters, if he made a play on the ball, he might have cut in front of that thing and gone the other way with it. I've played a lot of pick sixes, and I've never stepped onto the field during a Saturday or a Sunday. <laughs> Waiting back deep, it's Josh Smith for the punt. Now, what about field position? Oh, a high snap. Oh. You talked about a wet pig. Yep. He's got to get, and oh. he won't get it away. It got away from Anthony Hartz. It almost squirmed away from him a couple of times before. You know, when the ball just gets slightly wet, it is the slipperiest. If the ball is soaked, it's easier to grip. But if just a little bit of wetness, it's, it's really slick. You can't control that high snap. It affects the center as well. This snap was high. Hunter can't control the high snap. Colorado has about as short a field as you can get. And it's, not, again, not a turnover, but it's a huge special teams gaffe right there. Well, Mulder and neighbors are down there and in on top of the situation. So first and goal from outside of the five. Sumler is the running back. He's got a good lead block. Powers his way inside the two down to the one. And of about five. One thing that you can't do in a rivalry game like this is make mistakes and self-destruct. And that's a self-destruction mistake right there. Just snap to punter, not execute. Quick snap. Diving. He's in. Touchdown. A hurry up play. Cody Hawkins did it himself. You're right, Joe. I don't think Colorado State's defensive front Never gotten their three-point, four-point stances in that goal line situation. And he closed it up behind big Daniel Sanders once again. And he paved the way. And Cody Hawkins has thrown for one and run for one so far tonight. So points off a turnover very quickly. And will it get away from Colorado State? An inexperienced side of the offensive unit. Extra point by Goodman is good. And a 14 to nothing lead very early all of a sudden. In the second quarter for Colorado. So Hawkins got him before they could respond. The sneak and two scores. This special edition of College Football Saturday all brought to you by Verizon Wireless. And the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with the O. And right now at home in Denver. The Buffaloes of Colorado. A wet group at Invesco <laughs> at Mile High as the rain still coming down. Pretty good pace. Not as hard as it was about 10 or 15 minutes ago. But it definitely impacted the snap and the hold by the punter as it squirted through. Young man punting for the first time at college football. He got away from Hartz. He was down at the five and a short two play drop. With points right away. And Hartz right now has a broken heart. He's feeling pretty badly. Davis down win. It'll be Mike Myers at the goal line. And Myers will make it back to the 20. Good coverage downfield. Flag down to the play. And also Myers down after the play by Travis Sandersfield, the safety. Redshirt freshman out of Lyman, Colorado. Well, they make him kick it over. Offside, kicking team number 54 will re kick with a five yard penalty. And, and that he, he was right next to the kicker. He was the number one man next to the kicker. He should have been able to time it up better. Let's take a look at the touchdown that Colorado scored on the quarterback sneak by Cody Hawkins. Colorado State's defense got to get ready. They're kind of milling around. Colorado's already at the line of scrimmage getting the play. Still milling around, milling around. What do we do? What do we do? Not even in their stances, I mean. And all of a sudden, it's a rugby scrum right at them. And they're knocked back into the end zone because they weren't ready to take on the blockers. They have to get set and penetrate and get underneath Colorado. They couldn't get it done. It was an easy job for Cody Hawkins. And don't forget, and they may not need to show it in this game, but one thing Dan Hawkins told us, they worked on the no huddle. Oh, yeah. They well, scrimmaged the no huddle regularly to get ready for the new rules, and especially for the 42nd block. Well, they both have done it. Colorado State and Colorado, and they've both gone no huddle tonight. But you can go no huddle attack tempo like that. You can go no huddle and milk the clock to the line of scrimmage. You can go no huddle a bunch of different ways. Davis. Gets into it pretty well. It's going to be Myers back at the one after the markoff. Will the coverage be the same? Yes. 
So all he got back was the, the five on the penalty. Instead of the 18, it's at the 23 for Colorado State. Can they get it together offensively? Well, next week, the NFL on Fox regular season begins. First, how about the Rams taking to the Eagles? Or it could be Bucks, Saints, Seahawks, Bills, Lions, Falcons, and the Cowboys. Second half of the doubleheader, battling the Browns, or you might see Panthers taking on LT and the Chargers, Cardinals, 49ers as well. Coverage will all begin next Sunday for Drive One pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, in high definition only on Fox. With 21 snaps, two yards a snap so far, 45 yards. And a good run by Johnson. Good vision by Johnson, taking people with him for a first down. Boy, did it. First four and five, a great hole at the line, but then he started carrying guys. You know who he reminds me of a little bit with the hair? Is Lawrence Maroney. You know, I mean, he's got that hair flowing, a big, powerful kid. Steven Jackson. Right, Steven Jackson. That the type Rams. of guy. You know, he's got the flowing locks, and he's got the, the, the just churning those legs and getting everything out of the run that he possibly can. Manny and, Ramirez. Oh, that, that's right. Run score. Is that, are those? <laughs> is that real hair, or do you think it's those extensions? From the 34, I'm not going there with you. <laughs> Sick person for bringing it up. Johnson. Megan a miss gets into the secondary. For a big guy, he's got great feet. And he's inside the 45. The Rams alive and well in the 42 of the Buffaloes. I'll tell you, he has some little bit of a swivel hit make you miss to him. Just enough elusiveness. He, he took the uh, safety, Walton, who's a very sure tackler for Colorado. And Walton, whoop, whoop, no way. Open field miss right there. He had him going two ways at once, and he can't do that. Your upper body can't go one way, your lower body enough with a little bit of rain on the field. Walters found himself on the turf. Yeah, but look at the lower half of Gartrell Johnson. Body. He's put together. Man. <laughs> Six even, 225 pounds. Hard to wrap up and take that big boot to the ground. Ferris, the quick count that time. Here comes Heat, and he's oh. down again. Second sack of the game, Nicholas cleaned up, but he wasn't the primary. Instead, it was Marquez Arad. Sophomore out of Escondido, California. And Harad, just a real good speed rush off the edge. Watch him come off the edge. He's the one that's going to get at the quarterback's feet. Just beats the tackle, shrinks the pocket, and now, whoa, Nicholas cleans up up top. That's a free shot. That's a dangerous play for the quarterback. Harad gets the edge and wraps him up. And Nicholas takes the pop up top. It's a loss of eight, almost nine. Nope. The big play by Johnson. Well, where to go with the football? Gonna throw it. Pocket protection better underneath Paunga. And Lasso right after the grab. Brad Jones, strong side backer. He wouldn't let go, would he? No. <laughs> he was holding on for dear life, but he was trying to grab a shot put with legs. I mean, all there is is a pectoral and quadriceps. I mean, low center of gravity and real thick at that fullback position. There's nothing to grab onto. Man, these, these running backs for Colorado State, they're hard to wrap up. And he's hard to wrap up, too. He looks like he's not happy either. Smile a little bit. He, he's, he's, not, he's down 14. He's, he's aggravated. You would be, too. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy. Third and long. Just across the midfield stripe for the Rams. And dead ball foul on El Bullock. Early movement. Colorado State jumpy up front now. Colorado's getting a good rush. Good, getting off the ball quickly. For the snap, ball starts 78 offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's what, that's what happens when you get beaten on the edge to the quarterback, Joel. You start, well, you start moving your feet too quickly. And Colorado has already gone past their average. They only averaged 1.6 sacks per game last year. They right. couldn't get to the quarterback. And another thing, they only had 65 penalties all year last year. They were tied for fewest penalties in the Mountain West Conference. They, they did not self-destruct by penalty tonight. Starting to have a few. Hey, Nick, we're going, Nick, we're right. So now it's going to be third and better than 20. Not where you want to be. Especially with a guy making his first career start for you, Billy Ferris. Just trying to get some yards with Johnson. Not a bad idea they did for the punter. Let's see if the snaps are a little bit lower for Hart this time as he takes it down to the 45. Exactly, Joel. Steve Field, Steve Fairchild, been a coordinator for a long time at the collegiate pro level. Right now, third and 20, draw or screen. Get some of the yards back, play field position. Hope that your punter can pin Colorado inside the 10 yard line. The defense holds up, you get a short field back again for your offense. Start playing a little field position. Josh Smith, the sophomore from the Valley, Moorpark, California. 
Back to five. Try to pooch it, but it was a line drive into the end zone. Didn't go towards the corner. That's not going to work. So a break for the Buffaloes. And they're already up by 14 when we come back of their arch rivals, the Rams of Colorado State. Looking back on the Rocky Mountain showdown in 2004, it was at Folsom Field in Boulder. 17 to nothing was the deficit, but Colorado State rallied all the way back, only to see Mason Crosby hit a 56-yard field goal. And then after he gives them the lead on the Rams' next play, trying to get it back, Brian Ewu, you remember the linebacker, picked it off, intercepting a Jason Holland pass, returned to 37 yards, and Colorado won it. 23 to 20. That's looking back on the Centennial Series back. There's a huge hole up the middle. Stewart getting into the game. His first career carry. A bold one for Rodney Stewart. The little red true freshman from Westerville, Ohio at 5'6", 175. 5'6", 175. But this little guy benches 380 and he puts up 225 pounds, 22 reps. He is just one powerful human being. Low center of gravity hides behind those offensive linemen, and he's sudden. Now you saw in the series history there how close they have been over the last five. Uh -oh. And so it's up for grabs, intercepted. Horanek's got the pick on the deflection. The Rams are back in business inside the 25 to 24. They wanted the middle screen, they didn't get it. No, they didn't get it. I, I tell you, I, I don't know who, exactly who got their hand on it. I think it might have been Johnson, but Horanek came up with the football, but I, I think uh, Johnson, the line, our defensive tackle, got his hand on it and knocked it airborne. The one thing Cody Hawkins wanted to stay away from was the interceptions, but these tipped interceptions are tough. And it was. It was 33. Got his hand. Johnson got his hand on the ball. And Marinick made the uh, catch off the deflection. That's a tough one on the quarterback, but it is. It is in the books. That's the first turnover of the game. Although the high snap, giving the ball five yard line short field, is equivalent to a turnover as well. Now Ferris has a single. It's Kyle Bell. Did they pound it? Get it going on the ground. Bell following the lead. And it was a nice one over to the right side. It's about four inside. The 21. So they better capitalize because all the momentum has belonged to Colorado. We're halfway through the second quarter, a 14 to nothing lead for the Buffaloes. And this is the guy that they can play ball control with. And, and Joel, as we approach the red zone, 21 yard line, Sperry has to be more of a factor. You know, run it or play it, then play actually your tight end. You get mismatches with your tight end in the red zone. Yeah, Colorado State. Needs a timeout, and we will do the same. But let's see when we come back if they find Sperry in the red zone. Colorado State trying to get to the board for the first time when we return to Mile High. Champion Apparel salutes the history and tradition of the Big 12 Conference. The Colorado Buffaloes are going to put a charge into the 2008 season. Nobody will catch him. Lined with some of the most fueled up fans in the country, the Buffs are ready to chip away at the Big 12 title. Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! An unparalleled history of success. The tradition lives on in Boulder. Champion, it's how you play. Opportunity coming up for Colorado State off a turnover. Now can they get points? Well, last year in this game, Kyle Bell was the story for the Rams. So far today, Gartrell Johnson, a tailback. And Joel, talk about a guy finishing runs. Woo! Lower the pads, and, and you be the hitter, not the hitty. And then in space, whoo, make Walters miss. I mean, the guy has shown the ability to power between the tackles again. Lower the shoulder pads and thump. Finish the run. Get every single thing you can out of the run. And again, love your hair, man. Yeah, Dave, isn't he the classic BYOB? Be, oh, yeah. be your own blocker. Bring your own blocker. And he is bringing <laughs> his own blocker. Right now, Bell stays in the back. You have Ferris out of the gun on second and a long six on the seven. Pocket holds up better this time, middle of the end zone, wide open, Deion Morton, touchdown, Colorado State. <laughs> hey. 
That is big to get back in this football game to answer. Both teams have now scored with short field. One out for turnover, one out for a botched punt. So now it's even Steven in that department. Huge for Colorado State to Trey take advantage. Preston bend the line. His first point after. His first placement as a ram. The true freshman whose dad, Steve, kicked for Colorado State. His uncle, well, that's another story because he was a Buffalo. And he was kicking for Colorado. I'll tell you, Ferris does a great job. Surveys the field, stays with Morton. Morton beats double coverage to the back line of the end zone. Deion Morton on the receiving and great pocket protection. As the junior from Riverside, California, got a perfect strike. Billy Ferris got it out of the way. And now they're going to keep it in the ground to line. Get it wet. Get it and wet. It'll be picked up by Josh Smith. Making a miss uh -oh. up the middle. Needs a block uh -oh. on the kicker, and he is gone. See ya. Josh Smith going the distance for Colorado. That's his first college touchdown. Josh Smith had never scored a touchdown until right there. What an answer, Joel. What an answer to Colorado State. Coming back and making it a one-score game, Josh Smith says, eh -eh, not for long. And this is a... Uh, this is an explosive football player. Once you get in space, yes. see you later. Special teams aren't important, are they? Yeah. They yeah. basically have 14 points on specials. Kick by the line is perfect. And I bring up 14 points because don't forget the nice snap on the punt. Put him at the five. Okay, now getting the ball wet. He bobbles it a little bit, but now he goes north and south. He says, I'm hitting that wedge in a heartbeat. He's a straight line runner now. Now he's in an open field. He's saying, I got golden goalposts. Nobody's touching me now. See you later. Just an unbelievable effort by Josh Smith. And at first, when you have to you have to play the ground ball, he's thinking, oh man, I I, I botched it a little bit. And watch everybody stay patient and watch the wedge. They're all gonna they're all have their eyes on people. And they're all gonna pick locks up and get their hats on, folks, sort it out. And Josh Smith hits it going 100,000 miles an hour, and it's nobody's going to catch him. See you later. That's just good execution. Now, on the other side of it, Colorado State, Joel, they get out of their coverage lanes. You cannot get out of your coverage lane. If you get out of your lane, you get gashed, just, just like Josh Smith did to you right there. And let's not forget, as we look at this young man, Josh Smith, not only a great talent in his own right, but he's a great recruiter. Yeah, that's right. Daryl Scott. It's a going, family. Yeah, and family. It, a lot of people thought he was going to Texas, but Daryl Scott ended up at Colorado because he wanted to play and with it, his relative, yeah. his uncle Josh Smith. And Josh Smith said, "I'm going to show, I'm going to show my nephew that I can score because he had not scored a college touchdown. He averaged almost 20 yards a, a play last year. I mean, he's a he's a big time playmaker, but he hadn't put it in the end zone. Well, that's over. He put it in the end zone that time. He put it in the end zone in a big way. Um, you know." Colorado State had achieved a little bit of momentum. Colorado just took it right back. This time, a high one. And it's going to be taken by Mosier. Mosier's got a lane past the 25. Oh, Breaks oh, the tackle. Wow. Look out. Will this be the answer? Oh, Mosier oh. is gone. <laughs> Inside the 15, Colorado State comes up with an answer. Wow. Do you believe it? No. Mosher says to Josh Smith, anything you can do, I can do better. I mean, it's, I, I've not seen that. I've not seen back-to-back -back kickoff returns, in, you know, at the, I don't know how long. I don't think I've ever seen it even in high school. It's Colorado, Colorado State. Why are you surprised? Yeah, expect the unexpected. Man, that shivers. <laughs> the line for the part after. You know, you got to give Colorado State a lot of credit. They could have gotten their daughters down. They said, no, we'll come up and we'll, we'll block. They got Colorado State out of their lanes a little bit, a couple of missed tackles, and off to the races, and Moser says, nobody's catching me. Just an incredible effort by Colorado State's kickoff return team to say, okay, we got to do something. 
and watch them form the wedge and watch them come up the football field and give him a cavity. Missed tackle, bad angle. You got to get your helmet in front, head across the bow. Once that tackle is missed, Moser said, you guys aren't catching me. I'm taking it to the house. Unrealism. So the sophomore from Miami, Josh Bozier, and now with Josh, John Bozier, gets that one 90 yards. Josh Smith says, well, I had a break. I'm ready again. Now, do they kick away from Josh Smith? I would kick away from him. And what about, do you, I don't know if I keep it on the ground anymore. Yeah, I, I, would, <laughs> I would. My unit didn't at least set up that well. I would definitely kick away from him. You know, That's I, what you've got to be thinking if you're Steve Fairchild. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who is it? Uh, Sumler is the other return guy back there. And Sumler's a good a good, uh, good return man, but I'd test him. Smith showed me enough. I'd kick away from him. The line going high this time and gets into it. Smith with that five, six yards deep wants to bring it back. Smith coming up the middle and pulled down across the 20. Well, Colorado State on the coverage. And it was Jake Galusha made sure he wasn't doing it this time, the senior from Omaha. Joel, it was a scoreless first quarter. And there have been 35 points put on the board a little over half of the second quarter. Of course, you know, when you have back-to-back -back kickoff return touchdowns, those points start rolling now. Let's head downstairs. Not to the latest. All right, Joel, I tell you what, John Mosier needs oxygen after that kickoff return. Colorado on the other sidelines right after they were celebrating. They were totally deflated. The momentum right now, Colorado State, but guys, hold on, that could change in a matter of one play. No doubt. Last time Cody Hawkins was out there, he was picked off on a deflection, trying to set up a middle screen. Gives it off now. Little running back Rodney Stewart. Good yardage, but he pays for it to the end of the play. He was sandwiched at about the 27 again, close to seven. They call him Speedy. He's been the surprise of the preseason camp. They were recruiting a linebacker that he played high school football with. Yes. And he was, he was a, a guy that was a Mid-American Conference guy. Everybody was unsure of him because of his size at 5'7", a little smaller. I'll tell you, he plays large though. Bench is 380 and puts up two and a quarter, 22 reps. That's a man, maybe a shorter man, but he's all man. Yeah, but they have the enemy. We've seen Spoles at Kansas State. We've Absolutely. seen plenty of guys. Here he comes again. Takes the hit and takes the lick and keeps on going. Across the 35, Rodney Stewart showing his toughness out to the 38. That, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, there's a low center of gravity. I mean, that linebacker comes downhill, tries to put as big a hit on him as he possibly can, and he just bounces off it like, you know, like he wasn't phased whatsoever. I mean, that's, that's just John Clark put a lick on him, and Stewart said, no problem. Well, I've already seen Sumler, Daryl Scott, oh. and now the snap getting away from the Hawkins. Going to McKnight and did a good job just to get rid of it on first down. Yep. Well, we talked about the moisture. It's been raining. Slick field. And it nearly was another turnover. To save up to 70% on brand name products every day, Overstock.com. You're at home with the O. Calling the play at the line. And we talked about going no huddle. It's at the 38 where it's a second and 10 for the Buffalo. Leading by only seven. They have been up by 14 and 14 to nothing and 21 to seven. I'm out Colorado State. The Rams use their second timeout of the first half. They make it their third. They're out now. We talked about how close these games have been as we look back now on the Rocky Mountain Showdown in 2005. And it was in Boulder, Folsom Field, where it's going to be next year. Actually, we're looking at 2007 last year. I was told 2005, but it was Sperry, and then it was Bell. Set things up somewhere, and then a two-point conversion, three-point game. Now Everhart will try to tie it. 22 seconds left in regulation. He does that. And don't forget, as Everhart goes to win it here from 35 in overtime, it was all set up by a guy that went in the second round of the NFL draft. Terrence Wheatley picked yeah. it off in overtime. Spoiling any chances Colorado State was going to have. Wheatley drafted by the Patriots in round number two. From the 37, it's going to be second and ten. With a bubble screen action. Man, can't make a miss too often. 
out on the edge. It was Patrick Williams with his first grab of the game, the senior from DeSoto, Texas. Nice tackle by Galusha. You know, I, I tell you, Colorado State is doing a good job defensively of rallying to the football. And, you know, I, I, the guy that everybody in college football has a lot of respect for, Larry Kerr, their defensive coordinator, has these guys playing at a very, very frenzied high level. Final five minutes, a wild half. Hawkins with the pocket holding up, available, and he just went to. He's got a first down inside the 45. A stop and a comeback pattern for Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams, Joel, is as hard a worker as there is in this football team. He's the first guy to practice, the last guy to leave. Former quarterback, so he understands settling into zones, and he found the soft spot in the zone, caught it, immediately turned his shoulder pads up the football field, squared up, and got yards after catch. Yeah, that's Larry Curry talking about yeah. the defensive coordinator. He didn't like uh, giving up that soft spot in that zone. From the 44, Dry still alive for Cody Hawkins. It's Williams all of a sudden with his third consecutive catch. That's no game on the reception, though. Williams out of the same high school in DeSoto, Texas. It gave the Big 12 the exceptional running back Tatum Bell. Right, right. And, you know, he, he's been around. He, he's had three different quarterbacks, three different position coaches. So, I mean, Williams, is, he's gone through a lot. And he's a leader of this football team, another, another fifth-year uh, player that... Uh, they really respect. Inside, 340 to play. Sutherland changing directions well. And put down inside the 40. Dropped down by Pagnano, the strong safety. Otherwise, it could have been a big game. Instead, just about five. It'll be third and five from there. Now, do you start thinking ahead here? Okay, third down. Depending on what happens here on third down, could be a move point if you convert. If you're a little short, I think it's four down territory. I don't think that you mess with a long field goal in this situation with a wet, wet field a little bit. We've seen what can happen with snap. Showing right now only a three-man rush on Cody Hawkins, and it stays that way. He's got time. And going low, Scotty McKnight, and they say, no, he trapped it. Lost it going down. He was right at the marker. Exactly. So a decision, down yep. win. Yeah, now it's like, okay, this field goal would be massive. I mean, it'd be... It would be a, like a 57-yard field goal. Do you punt and play field position, Coach Hawk? Or do you say you can generate the first down and try to put points on the board? Looking at the clock, three minutes and two seconds to play. Cody Hawk is just a little bit low on that throw, and it, it, it splits the hands of Scotty McKnight. Did he get his hands underneath it? They're reviewing this. Did he get his hands underneath it and secure the football? On the field, they ruled incomplete. Is there indisputable evidence to overturn that? You can see how slick it is, though. They were sliding away. As Scotty McKnight went to his knees, the momentum of the route just kept him sliding away with the football before contact by the defender. Yeah, it looked like it crawled through. The way he put his legs together, like he's trying to cradle it right. before it hit the ground. And again, that football, once it gets just a little bit wet, that's when it is the pig is the slickest. I mean, that's when it can take the crazy bounces on you. Cody Hawkins trying to just put the transfer I'll tell you he got smacked in the face mask a couple of times there it, 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 if you're gonna call it his 15 yard face mask there's no more five yard face mask but defensive lineman get up in there and grab his grill a little bit is that enough evidence to overturn it I think they stay with the call on the field the call on the field is critical here I think they're gonna stay with the call stands is called on the field well, while we have a chance we want to send out our very best uh, Colorado Buffalo legend uh, head coach from 67 to 73 Athletic director, 1984, a guy who hired Bill McCartney, a real good move. Back in 82, replacing Chuck Fairbanks. Chuck was headed to the NFL. And our very best wishes to Eddie Crowder, oh, recovering right now. You talk about an icon, Joel. That's an icon. So our best to Coach Crowder, getting better every day, which is the best news. He made college football a better game. We'll go for it on fourth at about six. Here comes the heat. Hawkins has his first down. Going to his tight end, Deveni, for the first time, the junior from Roseville, California. Deveni knew that he had the first down, or he felt pretty sure that the route would take him past the sticks, but he also got it right here in the slot, going to run the route. He also got yards after catch with that big body. Drags the defender for another two or three yards. Big body guy that catches the football very easily. You have a size ratio there that uh, was taken advantage of by Deveni big time. Kubiak couldn't hang in there. Believe it or not, neither team has converted on third down yet in this game. 
And that's a fourth down conversion for Colorado. Gonna be the little guy still. Ran up the back of his own to locks the football. It's loose on the ground and covered, picking it up. Well, Colorado State's got it. It's the linebacker who came up with it, Galusha. Ball security. Turnovers are huge. Now, in college football, they called it a fumble. Wasn't an, was an immediate recovery. Did the ball come out? Ball yes. definitely came out, Stuart. And does Galusha come up with it right away? Yes, he does. So that call will stand. It was definite fumble, and, it, and a, a defender came up with the football immediately, if not sooner. That call stands. Rams out of timeouts. Have a first and ten of their own 27. Ton of time, though, with 227 or 225 remaining in the half. Little swing action. Johnson pushed out of bounds on the far side. Short game. As he goes out at about the 31, gain of four. You know, Joel, another Joel, Joel Klatt, during the course of the week, quarterback here at Colorado, when we were talking about this football game, made a great point. He said, if Colorado State turns the football over first, it could get out of hand for him. If Colorado turns it over first, it could be a good football game. And, and really, Colorado State had the punting problem that made it a 14 point game, but now Colorado's giving up two turnovers. They're behind in the turnover ratio, and it's keeping it a good football game, close game for Colorado State. Johnson, nice lead block. Bowles his way across the 35, short of the first down by a yard to the 36. Tough runner. And when you talk about Joel Klatt, what great memories Buffalo fans have of Joel Klatt and his matchup back in 2003 against Colorado State, throwing for 402 yards and four TDs in a 42-35 Colorado win. So when I mentioned those numbers, Dave, immediately think it had to be a blowout. But it wasn't. It was only a seven-point win right. for Colorado. Right. That's how good this game is every year. Johnson is a yard. I don't believe he's going to get it from Paris. Hello. Looks like a check at the line. Johnson. He's got it. Took a couple of hits, but hangs on to it. Boy. He is truly a battering ram out of Colorado State. Up to the 39. I'm impressed with him. Six feet tall, low center of gravity, 225, well packed pounds. And and Sperry now, we know his receiving ability. He's going to try to seal the edge, and he did. He got the edge sealed. Get up to that next level. Once you know you have the edge sealed, get up to that linebacker level, see if you can pick somebody else off. Nice job by Sperry on the, on the perimeter. Now, clock an issue for Colorado State from the 39 of the first down. Ferris with a ton of time. Over the middle, Deion Martin. That will stop it in the first down with the movement of the chains inside the 42. You can see Ferris's confidence growing, Joel. He's going to spike the football. He's going to stop the ball, stop the clock by spiking the football here. The clock stopped until they set the chains. Now he's going to spike it. Remember in the final two minutes of the half, once it once they move the chains with that new clock thing, it, it, the clock doesn't start again until the snap of the football. Let's head down to the sideline. Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coming up at halftime, we'll join the college football Saturday studio. John Raddick and Pat Jones, Corby Chuck. They'll take a look at first half highlights. Also, final score and the year of the Big 12 quarterback. Lappy, these guys are crazy. I'm out of here. I hear you, Knoxy. Get out while the getting is good, man. <laughs> I thought he fit in pretty well. <laughs> he looked good there. Jim looks that young. There's a return to party going on. Front of the 42, second and 10 for the Rams. Down by only seven. Middle of the field. Uh, Morton can't hang on. One and one with it before he had it. You, you can see the confidence level growing, though, on a snap-by-snap -snap basis for Ferris. I mean, early in the game, I thought he was hesitant and apprehensive pulling the trigger. I thought he was holding the ball too long. He was getting decent protection. He just wanted to see a little bit more separation before he cut loose. Now he feels more confidence, and he's cutting loose before his receivers actually get their head back around. And I, I think he's really executing the passing game much higher level right now. It's now 11 of 16 after the drop. It should be 12 of 16 after that pass. 87 yards and a score. Big third down. Going to get oh! it. No, it's picked off. Going the other way. And it's Ryan Walters. Ryan Walters across the midfield stride for Colorado with the interception. Yeah, that time he, he threw it behind Greer, and Greer tried to plant to come back on the football, and Greer just slipped and fell right down. 
And when Greer went down, he couldn't even reverse rolls and play defensive back. Whoops, there goes Greer down on the turf. Easy pick for Walters because the, the, the receiver can't even do anything to try to take the, make sure that Walters doesn't come up with the possession. So Ferris that time throwing it behind his receiver a little bit. A decision now for Colorado from the 49. 16 seconds left, and they do have timeouts remaining. In fact, all three of their timeouts left. Ferris and Greer, you saw him Too many men on the huddle. Yeah, that's going to cost him. And they Breaking the sideline huddle with 12 players. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, illegal participation deal. Breaking the sideline with 12. You saw Ferris and Greer talking in the sideline. Ferris was expecting Greer to run his route a little differently than he did. And Greer was telling him why he ran the route flatter on his cut. So they were on a, on a different page and cost him dearly. Walters made him pay. Got a single on Josh Smith. Here comes the heat on Hawkins. It's somewhere. He's going nowhere. And then they do it for the half. They may let it just run out now. With seven seconds left. No. Cody Hawkins called a timeout. I'm out Colorado. That's their first charge timeout of the half. Tip drill time. Yeah, is it going to be the old Hail Mary? 30-second timeout. See if she's full of grace or not. But th this is the kind of time, though, where the quarterback can be charged with interception that all you're doing is putting an airborne and it's a jump ball for everybody. Well, a point of emphasis for Cody Hawkins during the offseason was cutting down on the turnovers. Right. 22 touchdown passes last year, including the bowl game, with 17 interceptions. Throw in a few fumbles that he committed, and everybody says he just needs to clean it up. He had that good a freshman year, but he's got to cut down on the turnovers. He had 14 interceptions the first eight games, only won the last four regular season games. Now, final snap, it should be at the half. And Hawkins will throw it away. That'll do it. There was a second up on the clock. It's to goose eggs now. So they appeal to John Bible. But a wild first half with back-to-back -back scores included, David. Uh, you know, you, you, you watch enough football, you see something you've never seen before. Josh Smith says, I'm going to the house. And he does. Bob bobbles the ground ball kickoff a little bit. But then when he hits the wedge, he is going full speed. Colorado State answers immediately. And there's, you know, instead of getting their daughters down, they, they come right back with Mosier, taking it to the house, showing some wheels himself. So 93 and 90 yard returns. We head downstairs to Jim Knox. Right, Knox thank you, Joel. Coach, you got to be pleased. Your offense is getting close to seven yards per carry. But I tell you what, momentum back and forth. You ever seen anything like back to back kickoff returns? Turnovers, you know. We've had a couple of big plays on both ends. A good game, we know it would be. What are you going to tell your team at half? Same thing. We just got to clean up a couple of plays, get it going. You know, we had a couple of turnovers, got to hang on the ball. Same thing. First game, every first game, you see special teams turnovers every game. I appreciate it, Thank Coach. You. Coming up after the break, we enter our college football Saturday studios and join John Radican, Corby Jones, and Pat Jones right after this quiet, quick timeout. Football Saturday continues from Invesco at mile high. 35 points on the board at the half. And our life would not be complete without a dead out sprint from Ralphie and, well, his faithful sidekick, Jim Knox. Knox, he's going to smoke him. Look at him. I'm going to score here. Yeah. Tottenham. No problem. Oh, yeah. Right there. Huh? Really tough. A little back here. I like it. Uh, my man, my man smoked him. He, he does his best work moonwalking away from Ralphie, doesn't he? But it was a scoreless first 15 minutes of play. Believe it or not, it turned out to be a wild second 15, big play second 15 minutes, 34 for 35 points on the board, and back-to-back -back big plays from the special teams. But Gartrell Johnson, he sold the spotlight in the first half for Colorado State, and Cody Hawkins got it going, but he's got to cut down on the turnovers. No question, Joel and Johnson. They control the, the clock because of Johnson. He averaged over eight yards. Carry. You see him pounding it between the tackles. They 
you seeing him make Walters miss in space. So Johnson was doing all. And that set up the deep ball. Because the touchdown pass to Morton because of the running game got going. It brought Colorado close to the line of scrimmage, threw it over their heads. And this is uh, something that you've seen before. Hawkins to McKnight to the sideline. Then you go over the top. Linebacker doesn't get deep enough drop. Split the safeties. Hawkins to McKnight for a touchdown. Going to have to have a little bit more of that. And like Coach Hawkins said at half, uh, as he was going to the locker room at halftime, have to stay away from the turnovers, Joel. Well, Colorado State came into the game and they wanted to play keep away. And for the most part, they did hang on to the football. They had six more minutes in time of possession. And they did not turn the ball over like Colorado did. Colorado could have had more, in fact. They fumbled it away three times, but only one of them cost them. Look at those third downs, Joel. One of seven, one of four. Nobody getting it done on third down. It'll be the line kicking it away. Summoner is going back deep with Josh Smith. And Smith already has his 93-yard return. This will be from the 10. Smith, huge lane again. Can he beat the line up the middle of the field? Just barely tripped up. Touchdown saving tackle for Colorado State and coming up with a big play. I have really heard. Okay, Joel, the reason this is happening, you see Clark getting up slowly. The reason this is happening, and Coach Hawkins talked about it going in the locker room at halftime. You don't scrimmage your special team. This is the first time both teams have tried to bring people to the ground, have tried to tackle, and they're not doing a good job of tackling. They're not staying in their coverage lanes, and they're not bringing people to the ground, wrapping them up. They're just hitting them and hoping they fall to the ground. First, second game of the season, special teams are always problematic, and tonight, both kickoff coverage teams are having horrendous problems getting the return men on the turf. Yeah, good to see Walter Samadeus getting up. The safety from Kyle, Texas. Well, looking back at the first half possessions, it started slowly for Colorado, and then quickly out to a 14 to nothing lead. It helped with a bad snap on the punt, and then that short field with two plays and a touchdown. Right. And now, all of a sudden, another short field in plus territory, as the coaches say. Position side of the 50, Colorado is going to have it at the 45 of Colorado State. It'll be somewhat wrapped up immediately off the edge. You gotta believe that Summers a bit back with a little down and a nice play out of the edge, but with the speed back, Stewart have been able to get through there with the backside where not gonna be a two. Well, the keys for Colorado to uh, win the line of scrimmage. Rushing game's pretty much even. Steven, both teams averaging a, a big yards per carry. And they've done a good job containing Sperry. I don't think they've really gone to Sperry as much because Colorado's doubled. Tony, a three-man rush. Lotto in the road for Cody Hawkins. Yeah. Shot down at the 40. Looked like he was going to be able to get more. He'll be shy of that. They say the knee was down at the 41, so it's going to bring up a third and a half dozen. Now, I think that, that uh, in the first week of the season, the thing that you have to make sure that you try to avoid are the critical turnovers and the big plays and special teams. And both teams suffered by them in the second quarter tonight. So, Curry, close to six. Hawkins underneath, securing it is tied in. Bill Benny's second grab of the game. And boy, he looks it in, doesn't he, Dan, the way he gets his hands out there? Joel, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, this kid is the real deal. He's, he's a converted quarterback. So he's obviously very athletic. He's got tremendous eye-hand coordination, soft, supple hands. And he just plucked this thing very easily out of the air and then just split the two defenders for some, some extra yards. And he's got some size to it, too. Six feet, 240-pound kid. On a first down, it's going to be a timeout call. Safety who made a good play originally on Summer comes over to the sideline. They're very vocal about it. He had to call a timeout. This special edition of College Football Saturday, all brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. Stay smart, stay at a Holiday Inn Express. And the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at, at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox. Ominous conditions still prevailing in Denver. It's the Buffaloes. Short field, got the great return from Josh Smith. Almost another touchdown run on a kick return by Smith. Set it up at the 45. They've got a first down now at the 29 of Colorado State. Daryl Scott gets it. 
breaks the, the original tackle. They get a blow around the ankle. Matt Rock wouldn't let go of the senior tackle. Laguna Beach, California. A three for Daryl Scott. Cody Hawkins doing a good job, Joel, completing a high percentage, but the interception on the deflection, a little bit of a problem. Beautiful touchdown pass, though. Rodney Stewart, great yards per carry, but he had a critical fumble. He can't turn the ball over like that. Scotty McKnight is just too reliable for Hawkins. Going to be second and long. Scott again. Straight up the middle. Gang tackling Scott at the 23. So now it's going to be third and four. They said one thing they wanted to use him for tonight, no matter what, was short yardage and goal line. Because he's so explosive and he's got such a powerful body on him. And Coach Hawkins is definitely adamant about not forcing the issue with him. Let him get settled, let him get into his feet on the ground academically and socially and, and not put uh, the cart before the horse. First down on third and four. Just two of five of the third down attempts so far in the contest. They bring the blitz out of the secondary. It opens things up over the middle. And a first and goal on the reception by Smith. Well, uh, as you called it, Joel, great protection by Colorado picking up the blitz. Look at them all coming, and they're picked up, and Smith does a good job. He wins his one-on-one -on -one matchup. When you blitz like that, you can't double cover. And on the perimeter, you have to win your one-on-one -on -one battle, and he did. And Josh Smith got a little bit after the catch as well. Nice job protecting the quarterback, and nice job winning on the edge. So first and goal inside the nine, opening drive of the second half. Good play by Cody Hawkins. Can he get it there? Hawkins belts it put down. Oh, oh, oh. Sandwiched at the one. I mean, half. I mean, he's he's inside that one. He almost like he almost snowboarded no in huddle. off the ball. No huddle, David. Here they come to the line again, very quickly. He got on a sneak, and he gets it again on a sneak. Touchdown, Colorado. Uh, he almost body surfed uh, a couple of people in the end zone. Came up just a little bit short. But then the sneak finished it. They did in the first half before Colorado State had even sucked defensively. A little bit better for the Rams, but it didn't make any difference. And I think that's a that's a good up tempo tactic to use, particularly when you have Daniel Sanders at center coming off that line of scrimmage. Yeah, they, they were a little bit more ready, but still, Colorado surged off that football. All the white jerseys with green helmets were going backwards. Eric Goodman for the point after. So that's the way it begins. A 45-yard drive out of the hold of Scotty McKnight. And he hooked it, but he got it inside the upright. So a two-touchdown lead. They matched their largest lead of the game on a touchdown run by Cody Hawkins. That's the way it begins with the second half for Colorado. Impressive beginning to the second half, not for those guys, for the Buffaloes of Colorado. A touchdown drive to start it all off in the second 30 minutes of play. That's Colorado. Impressive. I'm not going there. Leads by 14. The numbers that count are Pizza Hut leaders. Well, fourth longest active streak in the nation. And I'm going to shut out in this one. Colorado trying to keep up. And the last time they were shut out, back in November of 1988. Reagan president of the Bill Cosby show. It was number one. And the fourth time. Mosher on the sideline. And out of bounds, just past the 20. Near the 22. The last time there was a shutout. Alice, Alex English, Denver Nuggets, highest paid player. Now that is basically the veterans minimum in the NBA, 1.65. Right, right. <laughs> and how about Oliver and company? I know that was one of your favorite moves of all time. It was. I loved it. <laughs> I was a fan. Colorado State. They'll put it at the 23 for the Rams. I'm a fan of him, too. I think Cody Hawkins is a very, very intelligent football player. did that because they were trying to scrape it away at the same time. That was Brad Jones, a strong side backer. It was a gain of about two. That is all. It took a little more than three minutes off the clock in that last Holiday Inn Express scoring drive. Well, once again, special teams set it up. Short field to Josh Smith. And again, this is the first time the kickoff and punt teams have gone live. They don't go live against each other. The risk of injury is too high, so. The sloppy tackling and out of lanes and coverage.
coverage is the result of that. Sperry is the motion man. They got to get him involved. Little end around action. It's Deion Morton. Trying to get blocks. Won't do that. Walters coming out of the secondary doing an exceptional job. Joel, there were four Colorado players at the football when Morton got to the point of attack. That's pretty good. And nobody was on the ground. Colorado all stayed on their feet, separated from blocks, and ran to the football. And four guys met right there. I mean, that's that's good inside-out pursuit. That's good recognition. That's good technique. And doing your responsibilities. Everybody trusting each other. Now third and long. First down. Colorado State just one of seven of the third down tries. Barry was in the slot, come over to the near side, and it's available. Nice. Ray Sean Greer with the first down inside the 47 to the 46. Good route. The ball was in the air before he turned around. Ray Sean Greer, this kid is, a, is, is an incredible athlete. He was third in the conference in 110 high hurdles. So when he catches the football, the fun just begins. He's really good yards after catch. That's a pretty good throw over linebacker, front of defensive back, Ferris. Looks like he's about 6'4 instead of 6'3. He's just getting taller and confident in that pocket. Ferris now 12 of 18 passing. Good ratio. And going for the bundle. Wide up and almost intercepted. Came late for Ryan Gardner. He's trying to get it there. The pick in and out of the hands of DJ Dykes. He's running up the sideline too. Both of these teams have solid safeties. They were questionable a little bit at cornerback in terms of inexperience, but the safeties have been around and they know what they're doing. And Dykes just reads the quarterback's eyes, pumping, watch him break to the sideline and, and give support and coverage. They're double covering the receiver to the sideline, and he just could not quite secure the pin. It was really impressive by Ferris and Dykes staying with the play. He looked the opposite side, the other half of the field. He did, but they're both safeties were rolling toward the edge. Over the middle. It's complete on the first catch of the game for the junior from Fairfield, California. Ryan Gardner short the first down, down to the 40. Another third down, an important one in plus territory. Colorado side of the 50. And the possession did over the first half of play yeah, for this, the Rams. This one again was the critical one. They lost 20 yards on that play. Gave Colorado the ball at the five yard line. And uh, when they came, came back with a short field their own, of their own on the takeaway. Of course, we're not showing the kickoff returns in those situations uh, back and forth with each, each team. The last time back-to-back -back kickoff returns for touchdowns occurred, Joel Baylor against Kansas last uh, October 13th. On third and four, the screen, forget it. They spelled that early, didn't they? They did. And the outside man was on top of it, McKay, the corner on that side. Young man from Southern California's Crenshaw High School. Eric Josephson down in the truck doing the quick research about when the last time two kickoff returns happened back to back in the same game. And ironically, just a year ago, October 13th, Little Kansas and uh, that that was a little bit more surprising to me because it's further along into the season where special teams aren't as dicey as they are in the beginning of the season as we've seen tonight. So the drive stalls that started back at their own 23. It stalls at the Colorado 43. Job. Hart's got it out inside the 10. They'll spot it the seven. So a very long field coming up for the Buffaloes. Ball security. There's a premium on that now. Colorado. Welcome back once again to Mile High in Denver. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox. Two touchdown lead for Colorado as they get it back. And if he didn't see the first half, wild ones. Back to back, David. Josh Smith takes it after. The, the strategy was getting on the ground, getting a little bit slippery. He bobbled it first. Once he picked it up, and saw a lane. See you later. Nobody's going to catch him. Then, you know, Colorado State, they could they could have gotten their daubers down and sulked a little bit. No. Osher says, I can do the same thing. And he found a lane. And, and again, early in the season, games number one, games number two, guys get out of their lanes. Guys don't finish tackles. And you can have those kind of big plays on special teams because it works for Deep in their own territory. Driving it out across the 10. Daryl Scott hanging on to the football. 
So the true freshman out of St. Bonaventure High School in Ventura, California. One of the most highly sought after recruits in high school football last year. Stewart did a lot of good things in the first half. Averaged over nine yards a carry. His negative though was dropped the football and uh, cost the turnover and Coach Hawk didn't like that at all. They give him four up to the 11. Showing a blitz off the edge. They pick up the blitz, get the chip underneath. Trying to make a miss and doing a good job. On the reception, Cantrell, his first touch of the game. The senior from Cedar Rapids. Time now for a free creditreport.com sideline report with Jim Knox. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Joel. Actually, it's an upper deck report. I tell you what, we need a little air after running with Ralphie on the 50 yard line. What a view! You. you got one Colorado State fan amongst all these Colorado fans, and Lappy, you would love this. I'm looking at the big hogs down on that offensive line, opening up some nice holes down there. I hear you, Knox. You, Knox, you smoked. Ralphie smoked him. I was taunting Ralphie. You were you were trash talking him. Backpedaling. On first down, going to Patrick Williams. And there's a flag at the end of the play, right in the interior, the middle of the line, and throwing his arms up in the air. It looked like head. Well, that's Devin Head, the left guard. He's still, he's still. After the play, personal foul, 72 on the offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Down counts, second down. I don't know if he hit him, hit him up in the headgear or what, what Devin Head did at the conclusion of the play. It wasn't any kind of illegal chop block or they didn't call a hold, but, oh, there it is. Just talking about spearing him. Yeah, the back. Yeah, when he went to the ground. Actually, actually a couple of... Uh, a couple of Colorado Buffaloes were fin. You know what? To me, it's just finish the block. Nah, it's a good call. Unnecessary. Play is over. No, I'm just kidding. At the eight, you it's never know. going to be a first down. Those guys can jump back up and make a play. Drill them. They'll drill you. And it actually was a dead ball foul, so it is second down and a busted play. Flag on the play. The referee, there. right. Nobody. They weren't in sync at all. Came back to Cody Hawkins before he was ready. So they're totally out of sync right now. The Buffaloes of Colorado, as he just ran it up across the 10. You saw Cody talking to Sanders. There was a little bit of a snap. Illegal count. motion, number seven on the offense. Penalty is declined, third down. And Cody Hawkins says, what? I, I, was, I wasn't moving. And yeah, he, he it, stepped up. Yeah, he was, he was stepping up to basically communicate a change. And Sanders snapped the football, thinking that he, he the next sound, I guess, was going to be the snap. And when, when Cody stepped up to communicate a little bit like he's doing right now, Sanders snapped the football. That's what they were talking about. Well, they talked about taking care of the football, and that's what Colorado has to do now. Thinking about the delay, it's Hawkins instead. He wanted to wrap it around. And there was a breakdown of the backfield. He wanted to wrap it around to his running back, who exactly. wasn't prepared. It was a slow draw. That's what we used to call the slow draw. As Daryl Scott is true freshman. And what you do there is when the quarterback goes by the running back, normally you forget about the running back because you think it's a pass that he's going to be a blitz pickup guy. So he goes behind him, and then he doesn't get take the football. So Cody Hawkins being a smart guy says, I'm going to keep it and run to the design spot of the play. I'm going to hit the hole that Scott should have hit. So he tried to make something out of nothing. Junior from Riverside, California. Deion Martin, Morton waits for it. Delano did a good job and then hangs out. Yep. A pretty decent one considering the high snap. Big time bounce for Colorado State. And now they've got the short field. Boy, we had some swings in this game. So the Rams have it at the Buffalo's 44, just when you thought it was safe. Now it's a return to Pro Football Preview. Raising the bar for free game shows, it's Sean Merriman. He's going to join Jay Glazer, Eddie George each week. Give you the perspective only a current NFL player can give. Pro Football Preview, it returns Friday at 11. Current pro player with two torn ligaments in his knee that's going to play anyway. Gartrell Johnson, and they've alternated Johnson and Bell. Johnson had an exceptional first half. He's high formation and on the delay. Nice gap for Johnson into the secondary. He's got a first down to the 32. You wonder why he's not been out there more. That's his 10th carry. Better than 85, 86 yards. I'll tell you what, he hits it. He just, he gets after it. I, I really like the way this kid finishes runs. And usually when you get a run like this, it happened on the it happens on the edge. Everybody has to, to sustain their blocks. Sperry does a good job. Receiver on the perimeter does a good job. And Johnson, instead of picking up three or four yards, gashes it for more than a first down. 
From the 32, it is a first down. The man in motion was the man who provided the good block, Deion Morton. That time, they rack up. Gartrell Johnson, no gain on that carry. So we've got five minutes and counting left in the third quarter. Well, Colorado State has got to start capitalizing on great field position like this series. And just like they did in the first half, when they got the short field after the turnover, Joel, they threw that 21-yard touchdown pass to Morton. They're going to have to do that type of thing. Coach Fairchild acutely aware of that with his offensive coordinator back on. He is still calling the plays. Pretty good quarterback in his own right is Coach Fairchild for the Colorado State Rams. Who's an outstanding quarterback in 78, 79, and 80 as they're starting. Good looking southpaw. Second and 10. Ferris with the heat coming, goes to the bundle, wide open. He's got him in the end zone, oh. and it gets away with a flag down. Over the shoulder was Greer trying to bring it in. Contact early. Yeah, I think I think they grabbed Greer's arms, and it might have just come right off his helmet. It looked like he hit him right in the smush. Couldn't get his hands up for it. They were it looked like they were grabbing his arms. Pass interference, 23 on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. See, I think that's from Phoenix, Jaleel Brown. I think that's smart. You know, if you think you're going to give up the touchdown, do the pass interference. Don't give the score up. And what, what, see if he wraps his, he does, he wraps his arms and hits him right in the helmet. Hits him right off the top of the noggin because he couldn't get his hands up. As he grabs his hands, his arms, whoop, right off, the, right off the beak. And uh, Ferris says, you got to call that. He thinks he's got a touchdown. And then he's like, oh, man, I can't believe that hit his helmet. And then he realizes it's pass interference. But better to give that up than a, than a touchdown. 17, it's a first down now for Colorado State. A little waggle action trying to get Sperry out on the edge. The completion short, only to the 15. So a gain of a couple. They've not been able to break that young man loose, have they? And Joel, this is again where I think he's very valuable in the red zone. And they haven't, they haven't gone to him very much in the first half. He had one catch, I think, for eight yards. But this kid is a is a big, big target. 6'5, 6'6, 250 pounds. He can run. Former high school quarterback. And, and, All around athlete. Again, recruited Division One basketball. A lot of Tony Gonzalez similarities. Second and eight at the Buffalo's 15. Little pick play. Greer has Morton set the pick. Oh, man, what a shot he took at the 10. Man, his Waltz is stacking him up tonight, isn't he? <laughs> but there was a pick out on the edge, by the way. Yeah. Little little wide receiver screen, gotta throw the block for him. Try to get him inside in the alley, little bubble screen. Walters gets out there. A little naked bootleg action off of it as well. And there's Walters delivering the big old thumb. Of course, uh, another Colorado teammate had the leg, so it's easy, easy to drill him like that when the legs are tied up. How big a play is this? Massive. Third and a little less than three. Trailing by 14. It's huge for the Rams. They won't go to Johnson instead. Out on the edge, it's complete, but short. Deion Morton on the check that. It's Pahunga instead. And he's short of the first down by about a yard, yard and a half. Good hit, and they pick the blitz up. And, and Walter reads it and watch him make the hit. That's his very sure tackle. Once the catch was made, took him backwards. And that's a big old fullback now. And Walters, when he hit him, Jack Knight the backwards. First career attempt for true freshman Ben DeLine. Out of Steamboat Springs. As we mentioned, his father Steve, former kicker for the Rams. First field goal attempt of this contest. It'll be a 26-yarder. On its way. And got it out of the way, didn't he? Yeah, perfect. He kept it on DeLine. So Ben DeLine with the 26 yarder. Man, on the short field, at least the Rams come away with points after starting with the ball to the Buffalo's 44. Well, we've seen many deficits made up in a lot less time than this. So now a 28 17 game with 2 17 left in the third. There's a brief shower earlier, but it has turned out to be a spectacular night for football in Denver. Welcome back once again. Keep it away from Josh Smith over the head of Sumler and out of bounds. So finally, they go away from Smith. It took a while, didn't it? It did. He had to prove himself, and he proved it more than once. <laughs> Pete's outstanding. looking at the coaches poll. And, uh, among the top 15, you've got five Big 12 teams. That's strong. That's, that, no other conference has that many in the top 15. 
pretty good statement right there. Yeah, Missouri, a win over Illinois, but a very costly one. We'll find out what happened to Jeremy Macklin. Yeah. Angle injury. 52 points, 52-42. Yeah, but gave up their defense. It's got to get better than that. Yeah, they, if they're going to be a championship team. The problem they had is if you give up a big play and it's a contested catch, but the big plays they gave up the guys running jail for Blitz coming off the edge. Hawkins goes away from it. And now just throws it away outside of the pocket. Good pressure in the face. It was Rennick, the linebacker. Oliver Cody Hawkins. Rennick earlier was on the sideline getting some medical uh, treatment because he had a little bit of a stinger. And they were working his hand and ar arm and shoulder and trying to get motion back in it. He's not going to sit this thing out. He'd have to have a bigger injury than that in this big rivalry. And that's exactly what this is. There's a lot of emotion in this football game, and it's very, very evident by the level of play on the field. Buffalo's going no huddle. Middle of the field. Sent to crosses Williams going towards the marker. And let's see where they spot it. He's short by less than a yard. So Patrick Williams didn't touch him in the first half. He's featured now in the second half, but he's maybe cramping, cramping up. Yep, he's cramping. They're gonna have to work that right calf. And he gets in and out of his cut very well to the sideline, makes a very sure-handed catch. Once he went to the sideline, he just cramped up big time. And they got 12 men in the field because he couldn't make his way off. Well, false start. Full snap, false start, 75 offense. Five-yard penalty, flame down. And that's Coach, the Hawkins, center. Coach Hawkins is saying, hey, we have a guy that's trying to make his way off the field. He's cramping up. He had an injury problem. He was offside. If anything, he, he's on the field to play on the Colorado State uh, sideline, uh, the Colorado State side of the line of scrimmage, and they, and they allowed him to snap the football. And he's walking like Chester. He's all cramped up. Oh, way too many penalties now for Colorado. That is their eighth. As they're up by 11. And a third and five. So only three for Colorado State. Three for 15. And now late sub. As they get the tight end, Govenny, back on the field. He's had a couple of big catches on third downs already for the Buffaloes. There he is right there. Scott stays in the backfield. Only a three-man rush all day to throw. Govenny, I believe he's knocked out short. No, they put the ball on the 30, which means he's got the first down. And he tried to stretch that thing out there with those long arms, get every inch that he could after the catch. And then he's in the slot, runs a little, uh, little, takes it to the sideline, a little crossing action, which a lot of times will pick a defender. That time the Colorado State guys unfolded well, but then he got enough separation to move the chain. From the 30, a first down for the Buffaloes. Still leading by 11. And receiver goes down, Daryl Scott, and you can see Clint Kubiak, they just got tangled up. Yeah. The free safety, you could tell his frustration. You got to call that, though. Pass interference, number 20 on the defense. That's a spot he grabbed, foul, he tackled first down. He, he, put, he put his hands around his waist. It, it wasn't like they're too tangled up. <laughs> he put his hands around his waist and took him down. You know, just good to see him healthy out there. His brother, the backup quarterback, a redshirt freshman. His father, one of the right on head coaches in the NFL, Gary Kubiak, the Houston Texans. Boy, is he in a tough division, the AFC yeah. South. Woo. How'd you like to be there with Indy, Jacksonville, Tennessee, and Ben Young? Yep. On the run, Cody Hawkins, Devaney, popped and knocked backwards. Good coverage downfield once again, so it's going to bring up a second and long and time once again for a free creditreport.com sideline report with our man jim knox all right joe i tell you what this could be a big one patrick williams right now still trying to work that cramp out on the sidelines the right calf he's chug a lug and gatorade down here guys but you know what after the rain a little bit of humidity on the field that could be a factor oh, scott belton man, man he, he didn't know what hit him that time did he no. Was, uh, I don't think they had those kind of pops at St. Bonaventure in Ventura, California. It was Sisson, the strong side backer, who just melted him. Yeah, it just came came right off the edge from the inside on, on the blitz and just got popped. I mean, he was an unblocked free runner to the running back. Pretty good job by Scott to hold on to the You're football right. because he got detonated. And, you know, like when Noxie was uh, talking about Williams uh, chugging the Gatorade, it's too late. But, uh, what you have to do is you have to make sure you have enough uh, potassium and and that type of thing in your system, it has to start earlier in the week. Once you start cramping, it's tough. It's almost too late. 
third and long at the 35 of Colorado. With pocket protection again. Hawkins looking over the middle of the field, and it's complete right at the marker again. The reception, the first one of the game for Steve Melton, senior from San Clemente, California. It looks like they've got it, though, by the nose of the football, and that's the way the third 15 minutes of play comes to a conclusion. An 11-point lead for Colorado. The Buffaloes rolling once again, and you're watching a special edition of Big 12 College Football Saturday from Mile High in Denver. A special edition of College Football Saturday continues from Denver. Welcome back once again, Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, Mile High in Denver. Game summary with Colorado up by 11. Back-to-back -back kickoff returns. Mosier for Colorado State after Smith. Wide receiver Josh Smith for Colorado. That's where we stand right now. Colorado's got it first and 10 at their own 43. On the quick out, Scotty McKnight in the 49. A gain of about six. Long time consuming drive right now could kill Colorado State. And this series, don't forget, started way back on the Buffalo 7, where their last two conversions on third down, Dave, have been basically by the length of the football. And that's a big difference in the game, Joel. Colorado's five and nine on third down. Colorado State two of ten. With that said, they still have a five minute and seven second time of possession advantage. And a lot of that is due to Johnson. 11 carries, 87 yards. He's been controlling tempo on the ground. And it'll be second, a little less than four. Big hole up the middle. Sumler, the first down inside the 43, down to the 42. His best run of the night. You know, and he's not going to give up snaps. I mean, he's competitive. He wants, uh, he wants his opportunities. He knows there's a stable of two freshmen running backs that are they're going to be pretty good, but he wants he wants his share this year. And looks like Colorado may be uh, redshirting Ray Ray Polk. Yeah, Ray Polk is the third. There's Daryl Scott, Rodney Stewart, Ray Polk. They're very healthy and wealthy in depth. They're true freshman running backs. Polk, freshman, out of Scottsdale, Arizona. It's going to be somewhere. They walled off the right side, shoots it up the middle for a first down. Boy, what a seal they had from right tackle over. You're right. Leave it up. So another first down on this time-consuming drive, killing Colorado State. And save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. You're at home with the big O. A minute gone by here in the fourth. It's very similar to the score we had last year in the fourth. There's an 11-point deficit. Some are changing direction. Very nifty. Down to the 27. As long as you can run it, you'll keep it there. And that's what they're doing. Well, the fourth quarter is where Colorado feels like their offensive line can start to take over. And their big upset victory last year against Oklahoma, the offensive and defensive line took over in the fourth quarter. And as we as we said a couple of times tonight, they're very, very sound at the at the center position with Sanders and at both tackles with Miller and Solder. Dave, they're going no huddle, but it's not a hurry up. They're just trying to make sure Colorado State can't change personnel. Right. Hawkins. He's got Scott back into the game, and he weaves his way up the middle. Good looking freshman. On first down, gets six, almost seven. He's a big one, too. Quick for his size at 6'1, 220. I like the way he's got two hands around the football. I mean, he does understand. He's listening to Coach Hawkins. And all the coaching staff, they're saying right now, look, the first thing you've got to make sure you do is secure the football. Don't want to see the ball on the ground anymore from you young running backs. Scott again, trying the right side. Yard short of the first down, inside the 20. When Scott got there, not in the best of shape, and he's lost about 20 pounds so after high school football, at the end of his high school days, put on some weight. Well, he's back in tone. He lost 20 since he arrived on campus. Yeah, and he, he arrived late. He arrived at the end of June. They'd already been working out with their summer workouts for more than a month. He fell a little bit behind, and his uncle, Josh Smith, that we're taking a look at right there, basically said, hey, don't worry about this kid. Scott might be the best football player I've ever seen when we were in high school. Second and short, second. I'll make it third, less than oh. two, low snap. Hawkins is not going to get there. They pinched in. Pottle cleaned up, but pinched in earlier than that. And he's going to be short of the first down. Well, Colorado has not tried a field goal so far tonight. He's telling his dad he's got it. But not, not where they smarted, spotted the ball. Took his eyes off the snap a little bit as as he was looking at the blocking pattern up front. Yeah, but that was a fastball moment away, Dave. It was, but he had his head up. It's 
instead of you know looking the ball in, got to look the ball in. I agree. The snap and, and uh, Berthy, as they call Sanders, Berthy has had some difficulty with his shotgun snap last year. So they'll go for it on fourth and less than two. Big hole. Scott breaks tackles. He's got a first down to the 12. Boy, they slide between the guard and the center a lot, don't they? Yeah, and, and this is this is where I, I think right now Colorado's starting to impose their will a little bit on Colorado State. You know, they're they're bigger up front, and, and the, the, even even if you're an unblocked guy, good running backs make the first one miss. And Scott made their best football player, their leading tackler, their middle linebacker, miss on that snap. Jake Barron's is in there, blocker in the backfield, joining Darrell Scott. He's the motion man. With a play action, Hawkins corner of the end zone, and he's lucky he's heard over everybody's head, because that was a busted play. Colorado State definitely had them out leveraged in their protection. Colorado State had two coming free to the quarterback, not just one. So they broke down that protection to Colorado pretty well right there on that snap. Coach Hawkins very pensive on the sideline after that. This drive has already taken 6-18 off the clock. That's killing Colorado State. They're giving them a taste of their own medicine. Colorado State's all about keep away. Colorado's doing it to them. It's going to be second and ten. The Rams 12. Scott again maintaining his balance and then finally took himself down. Kubiak had something to do with it at the five. You know, he's third and three. Sorry, Joel. He's got so many. His, his skill set's huge. Balance, but the vision. I mean, he backdoored that play. And when he read it, he planted that upfield foot and got north and south as quickly as anybody. I mean, the kid has got everything that a running back could ever hope to be blessed with. This drive started back at the seven. Now it's inside the six of Colorado State. Hawkins out of the gun. And it'll be Scott once again. He's got Barron's out in the flat, back of the end zone, though, too tall. And he had his receiver wide open, that was Steve Melton. He's already got a grab, the senior from San Clemente, California. A walk-on last year after transferring from Saddleback Junior College. Well, Pagnotta had an open, uh, a free shot at the quarterback. Pagnotta missed on Cody Hawkins. On a, on a just, he was unblocked. Cody Hawkins sidestepped him and kept the play alive, but could not complete it in the back line of the end zone. First career attempt for Goodman, and that is at Colorado, because he was the starting place of his freshman season at Wyoming two years ago. It'll be a 23-yard attempt, and he gets that field goal right back. Now to the line, hit one, 26 yards away. It's a 23-yard and back to the 14-point lead for the Buffaloes late. So they held on to it for better than seven minutes. Five minutes into the fourth, lead it by two touchdowns. Quiet second half so far, especially after what we saw with 35 points combined between the two teams and the second 15 minutes of play. We were spoiled. Joel Myers, Dave Lavery, if not, back in Denver. A 14 point lead for the Buffaloes over the Rams in Colorado State. The 80th edition. Rocky Mountain Showdown. Next year it's going to be at Folsom Field, so they drop. I mean, it's the 75,000 seats here, 50,000, 57,000. As it's kicked away over the near side, it's going to be Mike Myers at the goal line. Oh, and doesn't make it. Back to the 18 or even the 20. And delivering the blow, it was Marcus Burton, the inside backer at Channel View, Texas. Oh, he had an opportunity to catch up with Dan Hawkins to talk about the rivalry, the matchup early in the season with Colorado State. It's a good benchmark, I think, for the season, and sometimes your rivalry games down towards the end of the year, which we do have with Nebraska, but I think, you know, playing Colorado State is a great jump start to the, to the whole season for everybody. A lot of respect between those two coaches right there, Steve Fairchild and Dan Hawkins. Well, it gets you going early. It's not like a Division I double-A team. You're right. You're tested right away. It's Greer. Trying to break tackles. Did a good job. Get an extra three, four yards out of it. Up the 24 for a gain of six. Time of possession was a plus six minute to the first half. For Colorado State. In the second half, totally different story. Is they're, well, not dead even. 
They're back in it. Colorado has held on to the football. You know, getting back to uh, Dan Hawkins comment, Joel. It's good for the young players to realize, okay, this is where you have to be emotionally and intellectually and physically to compete in Division One football. To, to come out, come out, and have to match this level of intensity as a freshman. Bell gets to the edge, and with the stiff arm, he's got the first down. As Walters forces him out of bounds. They'll stop with the bottom of 34, but they need a couple of quick scores. 9-13 to play. And two timeouts. Don't forget, Colorado State used an early second half timeout on defense. You know, Steve Fairchild, we mentioned how he was a left-handed quarterback for Colorado State. He was second team all conference to a guy named Jim McMahon from BYU who went on to uh, fame and fortune with the Chicago Bears Super Bowl championship team. Ferris has done a good job of managing this game, 18 of 25. He's had a touchdown toss. He's also been picked once. And plenty of time in the pocket. Nick Bell. What you were talking about, Steve Fairchild playing at a very high level. And we had an opportunity to watch some footage of Steve Fairchild. Great footwork and a good arm. Yeah, nice separation from the line of scrimmage when he took that drop. And uh, a very, very nice touch. High delivery point. He is a good quarterback. Like I said, you know, your second team all conference, you're getting some things done. And obviously, a uh, very bright quarterback because he's gone on to be an offensive coordinator in multiple locations, including the National Football League, and now he comes back to his alma mater. So that's a guy that knows what this rivalry is about. He played quarterback, coached here, coordinated here. Now he's the head coach here. Yeah, it'll be second and five. Underneath, Paunga. He's got the first down. Knocked down by McKay. Well, he's taking over the field by in the Sony Lubbock Field at Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. He turned around the program when he took it over. Coming from the University of Miami as a coordinator there in 1993, Dave. What a treat for us because I did a number of games for when Sonny Lubeck was the head coach. What a gentleman. And just you always learn something when you sat down and talk football with him. Class act, great for the game of football. And, and they're good friends, Steve Fairchild and Sonny Lubeck. Coach for him, obviously, he's got his son. Coach Fairchild, he, he's one of 17 head coaches that played at the alma mater that he's now coaching. One of 17 in the country. Now on second and a dozen. And again, pocket collapsing, throws it away, and I wanted to tag those coaching changes because I want to wish the best of luck to an old friend of mine who I think is going to do an exceptional job, and that is Rick Neuheisel yeah. at UCLA. And a former Buffalo head coach who went to the University of Washington and a real solid head coach, quality person. It's great to see him back in college football, especially with his alma mater, like Steve Fairchild. We'll shop with the company that supports college football on Silverstock.com. At home with the O. The best of luck to Rick Newhouse and UCLA in their opener tomorrow night at the Rose Bowl. Not an easy one. Tennessee out of the SEC. Former MVP of the Rose Bowl when he played at UCLA. Did the game. He was a fifth-year walk-on. Former walk-on. Fifth year. Completion short of the first down on third and a dozen, but I don't think they have a choice as Greer takes it in at the 46. Walters has been very, very active tonight, and not surprising. Fifth year senior. Safety that, that makes great reads and is very, very physical. Coach Hawkins said at the Big 12 uh, Conference Media Days that Ryan Walters right away was a guy that I could hang my hat on. Dave, here comes the play of the game for Colorado State. I'm kind of surprised. Gartrell Johnson is not in the backfield. I think they're going to try to make him jump. It'll be fourth in the yard. And they get the first down. Mosier. John Mosier. Little snap back. He's outweighed by Johnson by about 30 pounds. The sophomore from Miami. He showed some wheels, though. He did. He's, of course, he had the big kickoff return of over 90 yards and you know, it's overloaded they they outgapped Colorado by running a little counter plan they had two lead blockers in front of Mosier so they had more people at the point of att attack that Colorado could get a hat on and generate a first down as a result that's nice uh, nice horns right there five minutes 40 seconds left Colorado State has to score get it right back three and out for Colorado down by two touchdowns Ferris in trouble again and on his way down. Behind the line, another sack. So Colorado cleaning up. That is their fourth sack of the game. 
And that's not a shock because Colorado State gave up an average of three sacks a game last year. They had issues offensively. So it'll be second and long. You know, Joe, when you have your whole head painted like that guy did, <laughs> don't you have to hope and pray that it comes off? You were mesmerized by that guy. I mean, you were just like, I mean, during the wow. headlight, you were staring at that guy. Wow. He had your number. You just, you just have to hope that it's water soluble. <laughs> Goldfinger is a good movie. You ought to watch it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Second, and 11 and a half. Little stunt up front. It's Deion Morton. Can't make a miss though. Uh oh. No is that horse, a horse call. No. It looked like he had him around the top of the shoulder pads. And they have to Could go be down. dead wrong, but they have to go down immediately. And they have the horse. They have the horse collar rule here in college football, just like the NFL. It's a 15-yard penalty. You can't grab inside the back of that collar and then immediately pull down. You know, Sean Bowler. Junior from Newport Beach got a transfer from Orange Coast. Coach Fairchild saying he was grabbing, he's he pointing back to his collar and saying, that was a horse collar, man, missed it. And 4 15 in county left in the contest. Third and almost 10. Get into the field again and off the fingertips of Morton. Got him up and almost like it was surprising to him that it was there. Got him up late. Joel, I'm, I was talking to a replay official uh, at the half. And he said that when we were trying to figure out why they were reviewing some of the plays and so forth, they, the uh, the pagers were going off on the field on the officials. The pagers were as the ball thrown high here, but the pagers were going off, and and they couldn't the headsets weren't working up top, so they were having equipment problems. They didn't know if it was related to the storm or not, but they were having equipment issues, and it was causing miscommunication problems in that replay deal. Seems to be sorted out much smoother here in the second half. Ball stays in the backfield. Fourth and ten. Great. Look out. It's over. Jones. Down he goes. Brad Jones is strong sideline backer. Five sacks for Colorado to begin the new season. And they take up a run down. And Jones is one of those guys that can put his hand down and rush from a three-point stance. He can rush from a two-point little tweener. Linebacker with defensive end. He can cause protection problems. Big sack for him right there. Three fifty-nine to play. Colorado gets it back as they stop them on downs. Yeah, the Buffaloes about to win for the fifth time over the last six tries against the Rams. Best connection of the game brought to you by Best Buy. First touchdown of the game. Thirty-five yards. Scotty McKnight. Great job by the offensive line sorting out the twist up front. Hawkins puts it over the linebacker between the safeties. McKnight secures it. Great play on all three levels. You know how quiet it has been in the second half, Dave. It's only the third possession of the second half for Colorado. They went on what that seven minute plus possession. Seven plus. They? Yeah. But both teams just been hanging on to the football. Very slow. Daryl Scott in the backfield. An impressive start for the true freshman. Out of Ventura, California, as Hawkins put it in the ground. That is a low percentage play for the running back, isn't it? Yeah, that was another bad <laughs> snap, Joel. That, yeah. Low. I mean, that was another low snap. Girth he's gonna Sanders has to do a better job of getting the snap at least at the waist of Hawkins because if he has to bend over and pick that thing up off the turf like that the timing's totally discombobulated and you have no no play can and I it, quote you absolutely <laughs> three and a half left and they will milk the clock now and there's no huddle set up by 31 to 17 well this is a huge disparity when you look at the last five matchups between these two teams the difference in the game, 2.4 points per contest. Scott taking oh, it up the oh. middle, taking on people. He's got a first down. Running through people. Man, yeah, he got past Magnata, a tough, strong safety first. He's got a little turf in his uh, face mask, too, so getting that removed. Now you see the balance and the power. Load the shoulder pads, run through a couple. That's, uh, that's two. One on one open field broken tackle. And he's just showing great contact balance. Staying on his feet. Excellent run. First down to the 36 of Colorado State. So last year, a 6 and 6 record during the regular season for the Buffaloes. After two wins in the first year for Dan Hawkins. And now his son Cody going oh. on the out and it's available. Wide open at the five. And they push out of bounds. Celestine, Kendrick's first catch of the game. Young man from Louisiana, only a sophomore. 
His first grab of the game makes it first and goal to the one. Cody Hawkins, good job of surveying the field. And I think, again, his biggest asset is how quick-minded he is. He knows right away what's available, and he gets it there in a hurry. Makes it a very easy catch to make. Allows yards after catch. I think Colorado... Uh, Ooh, close to a touchdown. Yeah, he almost got it in there. Colorado's going to be pretty decent this season, I think. They've got enough running back. There's Daryl Scott, and there's his first career touchdown. Well, how about that? His nephew and uncle scored the same game. Josh Smith scored his first college touchdown on the kickoff return. And then the nephew, Scott, comes back and scores his on a little two-yard plunge over the top. It's official now, if you had any doubts. Well, there is a lot of depth at the running back spot for Colorado. Yeah, that's just a good job up front. And Scott finishes it well. Goodman with the extra point. And now commanding lead. So a blowout, which is rare in this series. But that's the case tonight. Colorado all over. Colorado State. With Cody Hawkins, we talked about managing the game, and he did that very well in the year of the quarterback of the Big 12. And how about 20 of 29 for 214 yards passing with a touchdown toss? Yeah, the Big 12 is just blessed with many, many quarterbacks. Cody Hawkins hit all quadrants of the field. He went down the middle, 35-yard touchdown at night. He worked the, uh, the edges, the sidelines with McKnight and Williams and company. He checked down to a bunch of different receivers, got involved in the in, in the passing game. Through the high percentage, the interception was a deflection on a stunt. One of the Colorado State uh, defensive linemen got a, got a hand up on the football. Johnson tipped it, they, they came away with the interception. Davis sidelines it into the end zone. By. So when we come back, Rams will get it once again with 2.14 to play. And they'll have it in their own 20-yard line. Running game looking very good now for Colorado. Colorado State put it back into play in a big hurry here at Mile High. They've also got a couple of receptions quickly down to the 42 and a first down. 64 seconds left in regulation. And a hole coming up as Ferris throws the pick. That will end it and maybe take it the distance, but Ferris got back into the play. The interception for the Buffaloes, Sean Mulder has had an outstanding game, the junior linebacker. Only 53 offense, penalty is declined. So they called Pemberton for the hold, declined Colorado, can genuflect, take it away. And a special edition of College Football Saturday, all brought to you by Pizza Hut. It's true. Now restaurant quality. Tuscany pasta delivered to you, Dave Lapham. I love Tuscany by pasta. Pizza Hut. That's where we're going, Dave. That's some sad, sad pain in faces right there. We're That's going to Pizza Hut for Tuscany it's pasta. <laughs> it's our budget. <laughs> Taking a knee, that'll do it. They won't stop it. And one more snap. The old victory formation. There's nothing better than being in that huddle right now. With the offensive football team saying, guys, let's just genuflect, protect okay. the quarterback. Colorado's got Eastern Washington at home, West Virginia at home. Right. On a Thursday night, West Virginia's a severe test. It is. And they, they've, got the, they've got the gauntlet. I mean, the schedule that Colorado has is probably one of the more difficult schedules in college football. Well, tonight a successful beginning in the third season for Cody Hawkins and his father, the head coach, Dan Hawkins. Uh, Steve Fairchild, and it's good to see him back at Colorado State, a guy that knows all about what they do there in Fort Collins. So many years under Sonny Lubick, and nice to see somebody coming back to his alma mater, as he told us, and his wife there. Uh, it just, uh, it all comes full circle. It works out well. Let's head over to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Thank you, Joe. Coach, he just dominated in the fourth quarter. Your offensive lineman just took the ball to him. Well, you know, we had a few miscues in the first half and probably should have capitalized on some of that stuff. And 
we just kind of clean it up, you know, and you clean it up, get a little momentum going there. So much better job, but we got a long ways to go. We're getting there. We got a long ways to go. Talk about the play of your quarterback, you know, Cody Hawkins. What a job, like he's the coach's son or something. Well, you know, he, he was all right. We got, we got a few things to clean up just in terms of checking things and looking at things and some snap count deals and all that. But, uh, Hey, that's why you play. We got to get better. Nice way to jump start the season, right? Well, yeah, it's a it's a great rivalry. Great to come down here and great to get off on a good win. Uh, congratulations, Coach. Joel. All right, Noxy. On a solid beginning, a very strong second half, and especially from the defensive side. In fact, for the entire game, Colorado gave up only 258 yards of total offense. And they want to hang their hat on that and especially out of the secondary where they've got to improve on the corners. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, typical Typical uh, first game, there were some special teams gaffes, back-to-back uh, -back kickoff return touchdowns, but I thought overall good effort by both football teams. Yeah, don't forget to join us next weekend. College Football Saturday Twin Bill, first BYU matching up with Washington, and then we're going to be in Lawrence. Kansas Jayhawks playing host to Louisiana Tech. It all starts with College Football Saturday kickoff, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 on the West Coast. Now for Dave Lapp and Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us in Denver. Colorado prevails and dominates in the second half, winning 38-17. You've been watching a special edition of College Football Saturday. So long, everybody.